and we will get started. Oh, no, we're not live. <laughs> That's why we do tests, Martin. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what happened to my pen? <laughs> yeah. It broke. Oh. No. I wonder if I can draw with it like this. No, the ink's not flowing anymore. It's broken. I love these pens. All right. Now we're going live. All right. Are here we, we go. Are you going to lie to us again and hurt us? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I, I promise well, nothing. I range quit. This is, we're on a limited budget here. All right. All we could afford was the cage. <laughs> All right. We are live, guys. Okay, oh here God. we go. All right. <laughs> here we go. Let me uh, let me uh, share this on the fastball special before I forget. And <clears throat> all right, and host. Okay, we're shared. All right, let's kick this off. For the four of us in attendance and the dozens watching from home, it's time. The Fastball Special is proud to present Sketchlemania 4. In this corner, weighing in at 145 pounds, hailing in from Toronto, Ontario, Canada, Richard Relentless Pace. You got like about half my weight there. <laughs> <laughs> They're estimates. They're estimates. Estimates. All right. Okay. <laughs> and in this corner, weighing in at 175 pounds, hailing in from Oakville, Ontario, Canada, in his fourth consecutive appearance, Mike the Viking Ruth. What's going on, guys? How you doing? <laughs> and in this corner, weighing in at a lean 345 pounds, hailing in from Thailand, Paul. Lethal Lemenko. Thanks, Martin. <laughs> Hello, everybody. What's going on, guys? It's too. It's too early. It's too. Early. <laughs> <laughs> so, what time is it? What time is it in Thailand right now? It is six o four, and the sun is just rising. A.M. Six o four a.m. Yeah, a.m. Six o four a.m. That's that dedication, cool. guys. <laughs> that's dedication all right so let's talk bank. let's talk about uh subject for today we are going to be doing hellboy hellboy Ooh, my favorite character to draw richard's favorite character and, and richard does a hell of a hellboy ah. i'll say that <laughs> yep. uh julian has his drinks and pencils ready for schedule mania four julian's a good lad yes Yes, sir. Okay, so a um, couple of changes this time around. Uh, well, first of all, we got we got two newcomers, uh, uh, not artist newcomers, just newcomers to this show. Uh, we have Paul all the way from Thailand, uh, who's uh, worked on a number of projects. Uh, recently, he's been working on uh, Cauldron, uh, the Cauldron, uh, with a bunch of the folks uh, here in Toronto. Um, and we also have Richard Pace, who's worked for a number of um, a number of companies um and his latest uh he's he's got his own i guess it's your is it your own creation the latest one yeah i'm, I'm co-creator and second coming yeah yeah second coming um controversial but a fantastic comic <laughs> well thank you very much Awesome. So uh, what we're going to do, and the, and the reason why we're doing it specifically for the food bank, by the way, which is our, um, which is going to be our charity for this month, is uh, Richard's uh, been doing a lot of work for the food bank. Uh, and what he's been doing personally, uh, which is just awesome, um, is he's been um, doing sketches. He, he I guess, how, how long ago was it? About two months ago he started? Yeah, it was... Uh... About to, just at the start of this, uh, I had an experience. So I was in a grocery store, and I, whenever I go to the grocery store, I always throw something in the food bank. And I saw the bins were empty. And should I put my hand here? I'll put my hand here. 
my head. So the bins <laughs> were empty. He's there. And um, <laughs> I and I I fill the food bank bin at my grocery store often enough to know when they pick it up. And I was thinking, did they pick it up early because of the pandemic? And they said, no, people haven't been filling it in this week. They've just been taking the groceries for themselves. So I had the idea, well, let me open up commissions uh, for as long as the pandemic goes up and all the money I raise will go to the food banks. I figured this is gonna go on for a while. So I was talking to my art rep and he goes, well, what, what, what would the ceiling be? And I'm thinking, well, this will go up for months. So maybe a hundred. And we, we hit that within three days. Yeah. So right. I thought I would be like up to date, but I'm like, I got a backlog of like 60 of these to do. So I'm on your backlog, by the way. I know there's a lot of people. <laughs> um, did, you, did you request the Hellboy? No, no, no. <laughs> this will be, I think, the third or fourth Hellboy. Wow. You know yeah. what? I, sh I should have uh, suggested we did uh, what my, my request was. That way I would get it earlier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you could have been that. That well, what was yours again? Uh, actually, I requested uh, Bruce Lee. Yeah, I don't know if I'd want to do a likeness on camera. Okay, <laughs> I'd be like, I'd be like swearing after time, swearing and erasing, swearing and erasing. Likeness, I'm good at likenesses, but they take me forever. Yeah. So yeah, so essentially, uh, you, this has been going on for a while, um, and you've been taking the donated money and then uh, providing it to the food bank. Yeah. Um, so what we decided to do, just to make it easier, because you, as you said, you have a, a crazy backlog. Um, the piece that you're doing today is actually spoken for already. Um, yes. So someone already has that. However, the two other pieces that we're doing, um, one by Mike Ruth and one by Paul as well, uh, we will be auctioning them off uh, as we usually do for the food bank. Uh, so the auction will start, actually the auction will start right now if you want. Uh, if you have um, <laughs> if you have a um, uh, a number, just just tell me which one you're voting, for, which one you're not voting for, which one you're bidding on, um, and let me know how much. And then tomorrow I'll do the official post for it. I'll just take whoever's the highest tonight, put it on tomorrow, and then on Thursday by noon we'll pick the winner. Um, and Richard, if you're okay with this, uh, what we'll do is we'll ask the winners to do an e-transfer, and then that way uh, the money goes directly to you, and then we'll get the the uh, pieces mailed out. Does that work for you? Yeah. Okay. Great. Awesome. Uh, Julian wants you to talk about that awesome TMNT wrap uh, wrap around. Oh. Uh, Mike. Oh, awesome. Well, cool, man. Yeah, that was, uh, honestly, it's like, uh, it's a pretty huge, it's a pretty huge job. It's maybe the biggest, biggest thing I've ever done. Um, and it's a story that, uh, it's a story that, you know, was written a long time ago that never got to see the light of day due to the, you know, essentially the termination of the friendship of, Pe of Eastman and Laird. Um, you know, in the early 90s, it was written in 1987. So, uh, you know, I always kind of was aware of this weird story that they were going to tell back then. I was a fan a long time. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, when I knew it was coming, I was just kind of like excited, you know, just to know that it was coming out. And then to get the gig was just like, uh, to do a cover was pretty, pretty amazing. Uh, so, yeah, I, I've been kind of just, um, I haven't been able to share the process, uh, but it was quite a, quite a busy piece and time consuming piece. And so I wasn't really able to go online much during the process of it, but uh, yeah, it, uh, it's, it's just a huge thing and I'm super excited and it turned out pretty cool. I, I, feel, uh, I feel it's one of my stronger pieces and I, uh, <clears throat> I, really, um, I really wanted to go full color with it. I think uh, initially when I was designing it, I, the plan was to do like a full color painting and go that way. And then kind of towards the, the finishing stages, I realized that it might be kind of fun to do something that would make it look a little bit more like the, uh, like the original, you know, the original series issues that had that kind of monochrome comics back when they were just indie books, you know? And uh, yeah, it wasn't my idea, actually. It was the guys at Big Country Comic kind of had this idea while I was at the stage. And it just kind of was like, yeah, let's go that way instead. So it kind of gives it a different look. And it was a lot of fun and yeah, man, it, the pre-sale is tomorrow at Big Country Comics at one o'clock uh, and it's, um, yeah, it's, it's an oversized book. It's a 48 page book, but it's also like weirdly dimensioned. It's like, 
uh, 7.5 by 11.5, I think, or 7.5 by 11. So it's kind of a larger than normal book. I apologize if you guys are getting any of that road noise. Oh, that's all right. My is that the, uh, the old Mirage? I remember the old, I used, I bought the Turtle comics when they came out. I think, if I remember correctly, they were around that proportion. Yeah, they might have been. Yeah, in fact, that, that might be that might be kind of the reason we went in that direction. I remember them being bigger. That's true. I saw one recently. I was at a, uh, I guess it was last year, but I was at a show and someone had one that they had purchased at the show and it was kind of neat to see it because, yeah, it was oversized, if I recall. Um, so we threw a couple of uh, Easter eggs into the cover as well. Uh, and, uh, you know, from that uh, turtle eggs? early issue. So, <laughs> sorry? Turtle sorry. eggs. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> What was that? Uh, not turtle eggs. Said turtle eggs. <laughs> uh, not turtle eggs. No, no. Although they might be some. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, it was fun, and I'm pretty excited about it. It was a real uh, honor to do it. And uh, are you okay if I share it there, Mike? Yeah, sure, man. If you've got a link, I could actually pull up the original art. And oh, put it on. I got it. I got both. Oh, sweet. This yeah. is a this is a professional uh, show, man. Don't worry. <laughs> Well, here's actually the original art on my feed as well. This is the uh, the full size drawing. Oh, so it's a okay. Pretty, it's a pretty big piece. It's a uh, it's like eighteen by twenty two. Oh wow! So it's a pretty giant original. Yeah. Here, let me let me make your uh, your your video bigger here. Sure. There you go. So when you're doing like a bunch of people like this, do you yeah. have issues like trying to find creative ways and to have different positions and stuff? Oh yeah, you know, it's like uh, yeah, right. You don't want to repeat the same position as easy as that could be. No, exactly. Yeah, you know, you, I just wanted to kind of create some really kind of standout like ones, a couple upside down guys and stuff like that. Um, yeah. But really, it was trying just to create create some space and trying to keep them in perspective, and it was uh, it was a little tricky. I uh, I wonder if I have it here. I have my original sketch that got approved somewhere around here on my desk, and uh, I wanted to show it because there's actually a critical perspective error that I made in the sketch that was there. and uh, when I went to go finalize the artwork I realized that oh my god I can't finish this drawing it's going to be crazy looking like if you know <laughs> I, I basically had a, an, an optical illusion I had created in the rough that I was I had to correct before I made the final art so um, I'll, I'll try to share it later I can't find it right now um, anyway yeah no it's been an amazing thing and I've been really grateful to work with uh with Justin and Stefan and Leanne and everyone at uh, Big Country Comics. They're just an awesome people and uh, I'm pretty excited about the book. So yeah, it's been a long time coming for something like this. Um, never thought I'd get a chance to do another Turtles thing. Uh, so it's uh, it feels like a, a real privilege to be able to do it, you know? Well, you've killed both of them now. Thanks, man. Fantastic. Um, I'll just put up another quick picture of the black and white version. Oh. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I'm actually kind of burning up while I'm drawing right now. I've had a weird headache all day, and I'm pouring sweat right now. Oh no! Uh, but I'm feeling a little weird. Do you have I, a Do you I'm have a sore throat? Oh. No, no, my throat's good. <laughs> that way, I'm just feeling like I I'm not playing mind games with you here. I'm just sitting. Here. <laughs> <I was gonna laughs> <say>. <laughs> uh, yesterday, I had three beers with some friends in the evening, and that's about the most I've had to drink <laughs> in a row in a long time. So. I think it might just be a weird kind of hangover. It's just probably been 15 years since I had one. So it's, uh, it's just. Oh, uh, no. I, th I think Mike's trying to pull some Schwarzenegger level mind games here. I think so, too, <laughs> man. Listen to my advice. What you do is you have to be. <laughs> I'm Jay trying to throw you off balance. No, Jay uh, Jason said already you got an advantage because of your red paper. So. Well, yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, that's, I need every, every bit of help I can get, man, in this situation. <laughs> so. <laughs> Chris yeah. Ann says nothing could stop the Ruth. Oh, <laughs> cheers, man. Thanks, Chris. That's why he's the ruthless. Oh, <laughs> Chris Han, the guy whose name I always forgot every the first seven hundred times I met him. Uh, he's one of the most awesome guys, and every time I meet him, I'm like, "What's your name again?" And now it's actually just become a joke where we call each other by the wrong name. Yeah. How you doing, Chris? Nice, wow. to, nice you could join us. I, I, I moved. I moved the spotlight over to uh, Richard here. Please do. Great job, man. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> wow, good stuff. Oh, I'm not feeling too good. <laughs> I had like a Mike Hart lemonade with some with some animals the other day. And I haven't done that in a real long time. I'm not mocking Ruth. He's here. He is drawing when he's sick. 
No. Yeah. I don't think I'm sick. I really don't. I just like the last two hours. Maybe I'm just nerved up because I'm in the in the ring with you, drawn Hellboy. Oh. Like, oh. Oh. It's also hot as uh, as hell in my. <laughs> <laughs> Dominic <laughs> says Dominic says it's not a Tuma. <laughs> uh Dominic says he loves the horns pace. Uh, well, yeah, there's it's going with the uh, longhorns. Yeah, the, the guy actually wanted Hellboy with the crown and the horns. So. Nice. Oh look at that. Beautiful. Yeah. Perfect. You guys will be able to also gonna do that fire, so I have to think about that when I'm inking this. Is this uh is this an inked one or is it gonna be a color one, Richard? Uh this is gonna be a black and white one. I didn't black want to and rest. white? Yeah, because I throw out so much so much stuff when I'm doing the color work. Like the, the the benefit of like, you know, showing people the finished art all the time is they don't see all the crap I do along the way to getting it finished. So <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So it's like I go, okay, I, I can finish a black and white one, a color one. I might get eighty to wait eighty percent of the way through it and go, oh no, I have to restart. And everyone's like, what? <laughs> See, you know, the, the, this this show exposes. Yes, I'm exposed. <laughs> feel exposed. I feel exposed. I might I might end up doing a little bit of wash in this one. It'll depend on how it, how it uh, how the flow goes. Nice. I might go a little crazy and say, you know what? A little bit of a little bit of ink wash here. Might, so I'm might... looking at yours, and I realize that Hellboy does have ears. He you does. Know. He has pointy <laughs> ears. I have seen so many people put the wrong number of fingers on Hellboy's hand. I've seen so many people not give him pointy ears. I've seen people not give him the cloven right. hoof feet. All right, I'm gonna give my Hellboy pointy ears. Yeah. I love the uh, little diagram that um, I know it was published in the art uh, book, but the Mike Mignola uh, kind of how to draw Hellboy kind of notes he made for himself or for the book. Yeah. And uh, there's just some really funny doodles in there about like different ways to draw Hellboy and things to avoid. And it's uh, it's pretty funny. Like never draw him, never show his upper teeth. Like you never show Hellboy's upper teeth ever. Nope. nope. Cause it's just, you know, it, it, to, to his mind, it looks really weird, but uh, and then when you look at his drawings, you actually don't see too many instances where he has. You know, it's kind of. I don't think he ever actually has. I mean, uh, he also had that rule of thumb not showing the palm. Yes. Of, yeah. Of uh, Hellboy's hand, and then uh, then when they made a cartoon back when they made the couple of short Hellboy movies back in the day. Yeah. Uh, they asked if they could show the hand. He goes, "Well, I'd rather you didn't." Mm hmm. Uh, but if you do, it's your thing, so that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think we lost Paul. Uh oh. Oh, I'll see if we can, we can get him back. Maybe Thailand's having some internet issues. I don't know. Or maybe uh, you intimidated him there. You guys see the knowledge about uh, Mike's. Uh approach on drawing Hellboy. <laughs> it's the red paper. Oh man. Hope everyone's doing all right. So what is what is that red paper, Mike? What are you drawing on there? This is a uh, Fabriano uh, red paper. Uh, I think the proper name for it is there might be a label on the back of this. No, nope, it's on the other half. It comes in big sheets of paper and um, like 22 by 30 and it's called uh, Fabriano Tiziano. Okay. And it's called Lava Red and it's a 75 pound paper. So it's, um, it's not as heavy as like your most basic level watercolor paper, but it, uh, it's pretty sturdy in how it's constructed and uh, it holds up to, uh, to a little bit of abuse. Not, not, Anything near like what the Strathmore boards can hold up to uh, that I normally like to use tan paper. And I was going to do that one on tan, but I thought, ah, oh, I have a little bit of red paper. And I've been kind of doing a hankering to, because I don't have to go full painting with the red paper. I can add some tone and transparent tone. And, and then I can also just kind of like paint in the eyes with gouache or something like that, or add little highlights with like white gouache or a little, you know, a brighter, brighter color of red. 
and, uh, and you can keep the drawing fairly simple without having to get too serious into the, I mean, you can go and go and go with Hellboy, but, um, you know, for the sake of a sketch duel or you know, keeping it a little shorter. Um, I can Did you just spill see. something again? No, that's sweat pouring off oh. my face. <laughs> okay, sorry. That's, yeah. Sorry, that's oh probably going to affect the artwork a little bit. I'm going to try to raise it up a little higher and... There we go. That's hey guys, little... whoever gets this one gets a little bit of Mike DNA. Yeah, it's for better or worse. You lead on it now, Mike, and then you got the whole trifecta. Oh yeah. <laughs> didn't didn't Kiss do that in a comic? That was yeah, the... they 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 took some blood out and they put it apparently mixed it in the printer's ink. Yes. That was the rumor. Yeah, I don't know. Well, they actually What's... had a photo shoot of them giving blood, so. Oh really? <laughs> yeah, it was. I I had it. I had the magazine. It was Marvel Super Special Presents or something. Yeah, right. I remember it being fairly controversial. Uh, well, but, the seventies. I mean. Yeah. I mean that was all. That's that Gene Simmons thing, right? That's his. He's all about gimmicks, right? That he's like the gimmick king, right? Well, actually, uh, I thought the Gene Simmons thing was about having sex with uh, groupies. Well. <laughs> <laughs> First you, you know, do the gimmicks, then you get the groupies. It's funny. I've always been a Kiss fan, and I, uh, you know, I, I mean, I mean, not not so much the like the would early you sleep stuff. With Gene Simmons? Sorry, Mike, would you sleep with Gene Simmons? I wouldn't sleep with Gene Simmons. No, no, I would <laughs> like to. I did have a chance. You're not to, no. really a fan. <laughs> I, I, was, I was on the phone with Gene Simmons. Paul is back. <laughs> hey Paul. Welcome back, man. Hi. Okay, the important I'm question, back. Paul, is would you sleep with Gene Simmons? Is it for charity? <laughs> At his uh, age? Yeah. How how does that impact your answer, Paul? How much goes to the food bank? How much goes to the food bank? Well, it's if it's Gene Simmons, if you're paying Gene Simmons, it all goes to him. <laughs> True, yeah, and he gets to keep the original art too. <laughs> uh, sorry, Gene. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of his uh, big deal breakers for uh, uh, licensing out the Kiss comic to McFarlane. What's that? He had to own all the original. <laughs> he art. had to sleep with them. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's where I thought it was going. <laughs> no, apparently uh, it was a big deal breaker. Anyone who has the uh, the rights to the uh, Kiss comic, Gene Simmons has to get the original art. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, he's yeah. super proprietary, which I find funny because uh, I um, like that. I mean, Kiss is well known; it's well documented that Kiss put like tons of people out of business for like supposed or real copyright infringement during yeah. their their heyday with the masks and the the, the paint the paint and all that. Yeah, and uh, and that's just you know that's just fair business and capitalism, I guess you know whatever. But I always thought it was really kind of funny that like in that I think it was like early like maybe 2008, 2010, around there, his son <laughs> did a totally plagiarized comic book, like almost panel for panel. I remember they covered it on Whitechapel. Uh, and Warren's, uh, like the Whitechapel forum, there was a discussion about it. And uh, <laughs> I thought that was kind of funny that, you know, after all the people he destroyed for copyright infringement, that his son got the pass for basically lightboxing an entire comic book. Yeah. Uh, Mike, you already got $100 on yours, my friend. Wow. By Justin Steves. Thank you very I much. I think it was the DNA, to be honest. Yeah, well, clone away, my friends. I mean, <laughs> if we could clone a, a Mike Army, think Ooh. of how many comics we could do. <laughs> Sam Noir is uh, Team like Shannon one Tweed. Comic a year if you had 10 of me, you'd probably still only manage to squeak out one. <laughs> But, uh, I'm not built for speed, so. It's all right. All right, so I moved it over to Paul's. Oh, nice. Very nice. Paul, what are you, what are you going to be yeah. using today on your piece? Uh, well, if time permits, the, the plan is to use acrylic ink. Uh, nice. So, yeah, like these, these guys. Oh, cool. Yeah, we'll and see. It's, uh, it's just brush on. We'll see what happens. Uh, yeah, brush, and then because they're they're liquid, I can use a uh, airbrush if I'm running out of time. Oh wow, cool. Yeah. 
Very, very cool. Um, so I believe we have um, permission to show your cauldron cover. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, this is the one without cool. the naughty parts, I believe. <laughs> yeah. This is, yeah. <laughs> Let me share this quick. All right. Here we go. Whoa. So this this is Paul's cauldron cover for uh, cauldron number four. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Um, isn't, isn't that awesome? Yeah, that's all painted. Um, yeah, using using the same uh, the same stuff that came out of that jar that I just showed you. Um, but yeah, the original one um, is not clothed, <laughs> and, how, and then after a bit of thought, I, I was asking uh, I don't know, the, the powers that be, which is like Sam, Shane, and uh, Casey. I'm like, should I do a version where there are no naughty parts? <laughs> <laughs> I <laughs> didn't even think about parts. that. Right? Yeah. I, I don't really know what the plan is for for both versions. Like, I don't know if they're coming out with like, you know, like a variant cover or <laughs> if they're gonna put um the other like a basically like a two page kind of situation. Yeah, this like is you, fantastic, like, man. Thanks. Love it. And I thought yeah. it was digital, actually, at first. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You were saying, um, no, all, all acrylic ink. Wow. Yeah, that is a great piece. That's gonna be a that's gonna be a killer issue. Actually, all of them have been really killer issues. <laughs> yeah, Casey did Casey did the covers for the other ones, right? All Casey three. did one of the covers. Uh, Adam Gorn uh, also did oh. a cover. Oh, I'm wrong. And the other one, the other one you sent me is that that's in three. That's uh on that's the back cover. Oh, that's the back cover. Okay. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, I I asked those guys if they if I could contribute, and they said, well, the back of the book is empty. So. Wow. Is is that also yeah. painted or is that digital? Yeah, that one's all watercolor. That's watercolor? Uh, okay, but, I'm going to share that very, yeah. very quick. Crazy piece, man. I've that is that. a creepy piece here. Check this out. You're a monster, Paul. Check, check, the, <laughs> check this thing out. Yeah, that's insane. That's, look, at the that's value, a, look at the value on that. Look at the value scale on that, man. That is just tremendous. I wow. wanted to have like a bit of like a found footage horror movie look. So the, yeah. you know, the, the light is cut or the light source is basically where the camera would be genius and uh and i was trying to figure out what to do for the background and i decided to do the waiting room of the travel travel clinic i was at at the time <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> that is awesome um so sam is actually saying that the nude version will be a kickstarter exclusive oh, oh cool. okay okay yep uh julian says cauldron black bag edition <laughs> <laughs> the naughty parts all right i'm gonna i'm gonna head back over who wants a little spotlight here i'm really behind on my drawing here guys it's not fair i apologize <laughs> again for the noise guys there's uh i live on Lake you're Shore driving Road, and there's like all kinds <laughs> of noise outside so <sighs> So Casey, okay, sorry. So Casey did covers one and two, and then uh, I guess Adam Gorham did uh, three. Oh, okay. And Dominic says, incredible texturing, Paul, uh, using the special lighting. Thanks, Dominic. Maybe I was watching too many like uh, those horror movies where it's those like Blair Witch and paranormal yeah. activity and <laughs> I, I i totally get that vibe from that right is that uh dominic as in dominic shen yang yep right hello on. dominic how you doing dominic <laughs> dominic's a very old friend he was at school with both casey and i shared in college oh yeah dominic is a genius artist in his own right and a brilliant designer really really nice guy 
He also uh, he's an elegant dancer. He's he's just and an a awesome gentle guy. lover. Many, a time, <laughs> many cigarettes with that guy out in the uh, smoking area of Sheridan in the late nineties. What did you guys take at Sheridan? Uh, interpretive illustration. Before it was a, well, I guess it's considered a degree program now. It was a three-year three-year interpretive illustration program where we had actual illustrators as our teachers, and not teachers uh, trying to teach illustrators. We had illustrators teaching illustrators how to be illustrators, and it was awesome. Ooh, I've never heard it. of that term, interpretive illustration. Like, yeah, what is? Focus on, how is that uh, different from? It basically had to focus on stuff like editorial stuff and storytelling, advertising. Like you could, you could sort of, by third year, you could sort of uh, specialize in uh, what branch you wanted to go in with illustration. And it just sort of gave you, I don't know, I felt like it was a very time well spent in my case. There was a lot of, there's a lot of things I would have done differently. Uh, like I would have pushed back a little bit more um, on a couple things. Um, but I kind of just uh, went through the motions and, Learned a lot. Learned about deadlines. Learned about all that. So, stuff. So, the, so you want to go and do a project one way, but the teachers were pushing you back and saying, "No, well, don't do I, it I this way." Basically, you know what it is, man. I basically wanted to draw Vikings all the time, and I wanted to find, <laughs> I wanted to find a way to to like uh, crowbar Vikings or monsters or Conan shit into basically everything I did, whether it was advertising. Children. Hallelujah. Uh, comic books. I wanted to do that kind of stuff, and they really pushed against that. But it was the late '90s, mid to late '90s, where comic books were kind of in that weird death zone. Like it was before the movies came out, before the kind of re reboot reboot. So they probably, in a way, did us a service by trying to fight it, push us against comics, because uh, you know it, it's obviously I'm, as you, as I'm finding out in my 40s, it's not it's not the most lucrative kind of way to make a living, but it's it's an, it's very enjoyable, and there's lots of freedom in other ways. And, making art for a living is just an awesome thing and you can do it, but it's not the, it's not the kind of money you make doing advertising or, or, or doing illustrations of that nature, but that kind of stuff kind of harder to find now. So it's a, uh, you know, I, I basically, it, what it did, all it did was it delayed my, my pursuit of wanting to do comics for a long time because I, I it had, it was sort of beaten out of me a little bit, you know, at school uh, in that in that way. Um, yeah. Yeah. It seemed like uh Every type of art education type seems to like uh, push away from comic books. Growing up, that's what it felt like. I go to like high school and uh, university afterwards. Like they had something against comic books. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and, I, I, uh, I, w I always had the operating theory that most of the teachers at some point wanted to do comics and couldn't make it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There you go. With that. So there was a little bit of bitterness involved in them saying, well, comics, no one can make a living in comics because I couldn't make a living in comics. Mm -hmm. Right. At I, least, at least for that's my, what I call myself when I cry myself with a sleep over the fact that I'm still working <laughs> in comics. <laughs> <laughs> um, my, my, my last project in, uh, in school was open. Like we could do anything we wanted. So uh i was like okay fine so i'm gonna paint against everything that they told me not to do or what everybody like hates in this art school so i painted uh uh, uh an an ad for burger king uh, nice. i painted a i painted a dragon and then i painted a picture of batman <laughs> and my teacher and my teacher who is like the the stereotype of all art teachers with the scarf and the beret he loved it oh my gosh um and I'm like, okay, this this critique day did not go as I thought it was going to go. And then I go to a Comic-Con and I saw my Batman. <laughs> so, a and, you're, a and you're not wearing a beret? <laughs> well, you can't see me right now. <laughs> well, if it was warm, you wouldn't be wearing much more. <laughs> Just a beret. <laughs> Just a beret. Bradbury beret. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I had a few things. First of all, I got I got to correct myself. Uh, so <laughs> Casey did the Cauldron cover for the first one, Adam Gorman for the second, and then Casey did the third one. So sorry, guys. <laughs> okay. Um, we did get a question though earlier. Uh, what's your favorite uh, horror character to draw? That's a good question. Hmm. Yeah. Technically, Hellboy's a horror character. 
I was going to say, I guess technically Swamp Thing's a horror character, but um, taking him aside out of comic books, uh, man, that is a good question. I guess I like drawing werewolves and stuff. I, lo I lo actually, I love drawing, um, I love drawing uh, the creature from the Black Lagoon. Like that's, that's oh kind of, yeah, I love, I love like a good, you know, a good fish monster kind of character. You know, <clears throat> I actually yeah. have a creature to do on my list. Nice. <laughs> Horror creatures are fun because they always have like a lot of texture to draw yeah. from, right? Like werewolves and swamp thing, anything, creature uh, from the Black Lagoon. For me, it's anything where you can just kind of let the let the brush do whatever it's going to do, you know? Like just let the just just kind of make a make a repetitive mark and create a, a pattern and suggest a a leathery hide or a you know a whatever you know kind of surface. Um, I got this spear going diagonal. I don't even know why I decided to put a spear going diagonal. Now I wish I had a spear going straight. <sighs> apparently, Shane says Whatever. apparently uh, he got the Prince reference and we didn't get it. I got the Prince reference. I, I get it. it. <laughs> you missed it. I missed it. <laughs> I'm trying to do a lot here, you, guys. <laughs> just you. Yeah, it was just, so basically it's just me. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> And I got the covers uh, wrong. It's all right. Well, technically you didn't because Casey actually colored Adam Gorham's work on cover number two. There you go. Casey did. Uh, fully, yeah, Sam. Casey did, uh, <laughs> uh, fully painted yeah. rendition, basically <laughs> using uh, over, kind of overlaid on Adam's lines. So. Uh, yeah. yeah. That's what I meant. Kind of like blue line. Um, I think he, I'm not sure if he printed a blue line or if he printed the blue line so that he could create the painting and then they just dropped Adam's inks over top of that, like lined up with the blue line that was still visible with the painting. I'm not sure exactly how they did it, but it was something like that. Cause I remember, I remember Casey was, uh, I think he was in Oakville working on a bit of that. Cause I, he was, we were hanging out at the shop and I think he was, he was just doing these big color fields of kind of purple and blue and uh, you know, with a highlight area and trying to figure, and he was kind of just keeping the, the framework that Adam had laid out with his lines in mind. Uh, if I recall, uh, it was some, some kind of combination of Adam's lines overlaid on Casey's painting, which was based on Adam's lines. Ah. This is hey, for Casey, uh, number Casey just two. joined us, by the way, in the, in the chat. Right on. Is he really? Yeah. Not, man. Is he drawing? Or is he yeah, lazy? Casey, you drawing? Let us know. So Casey's saying Adam did full inks. I scanned and printed it out on a heavier heavier paper that I could paint on. Uh, okay, yeah. Oh, okay, that makes sense because I could, the all three look very similar in style. Yeah, well, I remember it was Casey came back from that uh, that um, artist uh, illustration academy thing in Kansas City in last April. Uh, he came home and he was all, I remember he was just supercharged by like hanging out with all these artists like um, Bill Sienkiewicz and all these guys for like a week. And he came back and he blasted out that third paint, the third cover of, of, uh, of Cauldron like that week. Like he just, he just came home and just, <laughs> just dropped this crazy Frazetta bomb and knocked it in the cover for number three out. And yeah, it was, it, it was, was kinda, great. Kind of crazy to see. Like he just was like supercharged by the experience, you know, and it was easy to see in their work. Such a great cover. It's great. It's like when that happens, like he doesn't need coffee. <laughs> he already <laughs> has the, the hormones in there, the adrenaline. So Richard, how's uh, second coming coming? Second coming uh, I'm coming? I'm working on issue uh, <laughs> nine now. And it's wow. uh, taking place, a big chunk of all the, pretty much all the stuff I'm doing is taking place during the Crusades. Wow. So it's fun. That's super fun. Yeah. I know how and much you hate drawn medieval stuff, Richard. So, uh. <laughs> yeah, I can, I can, I can draw medieval stuff a bit. Oh, I'm gonna head over to Richard's for a little bit. Yeah, my sorry, my pencil's super reflecty on that. I'm sorry, guys. Wow. What? Hey. Uh, it's gonna be inking time in a sec here. I just gotta get. Sometimes you just can't draw a hand. Sometimes you can. Clearly, Richard can draw whatever he wants. Look at that. Fantastic. Kyle Reisner is here. Hands, Kyle Reisner is here with us, guys. Kyle. I think er Eric, Eric Anthony was here, too. You should have jumped yeah, on. Why isn't Eric you on the jumping show? on, man. Anyway, you still can. 
So, uh, Richard, I, I, was, I saw some other uh, uh, video of you talking about how you were finding, or it was turned down by different publishers, Second Coming. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> and it was in the news, too. <laughs> so it was originally DC, no, Richard? Oh, you're talking about Second Coming, Paul? Second Coming, yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh no, we uh, we tr we turned down publishers actually. Oh, okay. After after Vertigo gave it back, pretty much everyone except for Image, who already had a Jesus book on their schedule, so they didn't want the hassle. Um, <laughs> everyone else was like, "Yeah, we want to publish your book. We want to be in the Second Coming business." And uh, and then ultimately, uh, Ahoy was the best fit. Um, I mean, you got two of the premier editors from Vertigo back in their golden years, uh, handing an imprint that specifically handles satire and we're doing a satirical book. So it, it was kind of like a natural fit. That's awesome. And so how many issues do you have out now? Uh, we have the first trade out. Uh, I think we're holding off till we get about uh, three or four in the can and, uh, and then soliciting. So I think the next arc is going to start this fall. And uh, according to Mark, we're doing around 24 to 30 issues total. Wow. 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 Yeah. So it's, uh, it's a lot of stuff. And you're, you're staying on the book the whole run? That's the plan. That is super awesome, man. And uh, the only risk is uh, trying to keep Leonard Kirk happy through the whole process. Oh, Leonard's inking your stuff, and or is he? How's that working? How's that breakdown uh, with you guys? I do layouts. I do layouts for all the stuff that features Sunstar, our Superman guy, as the lead, and then Leonard does his magic and makes it makes it look like I knew what I was doing when I did those layouts. <laughs> and I do uh, I do full art, including colors, on all the all the scenes that are specifically uh, tying in with. Uh, uh, heaven, Jesus, God, uh, historical element, throwbacks, all that stuff. So uh, issue six is pretty much all Leonard after I laid it out. Um, and then it's pretty, been pretty heavily me for the next uh, two issues. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's uh, I thought I was going to get away with almost doing nothing, but no. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> well, you figure everything's going to take place in, uh, in uh, urban city. Uh, and uh, Leonard will have to do all the work, but no. <laughs> Sam's looking forward to a second coming. Yeah, it's, it's, it's been it's been fun. I mean, it's um, I mean, I I I honestly thought I'd be doing my own creator own stuff, like me writing and drawing before then. But this book kind of put the kibosh on that. I'm I'm going to be working on this till it's done, and uh, then I'll be going off and doing my own thing. So. That's wicked. Yeah. Oh. oh man. Paul, what are you up to? Let's see what Paul's up to. Oh, he's inking. Oh, he's inking. Uh, it's just pencil. Huh? Is that pencil? Oh, it's pencil. Okay, sorry. I, I'm darkening. <laughs> it's darkening. <laughs> My Hellboy looks a little elf-like. <laughs> well, if you get a little carried away with the ears. It's okay. <laughs> oh. oh, man. Anybody else uh, drawing with us tonight? Let us know. Is there a thread for this in Facebook right now? Yeah. Oh, so ask them to, to post their works in progress on the Facebook page. Yeah. So yeah. See where post. they're at through the whole thing. That'd be awesome. Please do. <laughs> oh, I put it right here. Never mind. Oh, Lord. Any questions? Anyone asking any questions? Let's see. Uh, no, Casey was just asking about your cover, Paul, because he came late. He's late to the party. We already talked about that, Casey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Casey. Yeah. And the back. And the back cover. <laughs> yeah. So Kyle, I think Kyle is, is drawing with us. I think he just started. 
That's mm -hmm. what he's saying. Sorry, we have about 72 two comments here, and I'm sure I missed uh, most of them. But you need Eric, man. You need oh, I need Eric. Eric's the, Eric's the good... Uh... <laughs> Uh, yeah, Dominic is, is catching him up. <laughs> you missed a lot of good stuff. Showed the cauldron cover, uh, the TMNT, uh, last Ronin cover. Uh, Ruth called me out. <laughs> and Richard shared, uh, my outstanding dancing capabilities. <laughs> no, that was Dominic, not you. <laughs> I've seen you dance, no. <laughs> no, no words of lie, Martin. Uh, Dominic would be kind of an awesome dude to get on your show in a sketch battle. Sure. Like, the guy can draw, but he's just a an awesome like brain for comics and art. And he, I just think he'd be. Um, but I like the guy, right? Like I've been to his wedding and that. Like he's he's a good guy. Like I I wouldn't say anything bad about him. I did, I think he'd be a great addition to the show, though. He's uh He's um he's got actually some cool stuff under his belt that he's done some really neat stuff that pretty much everyone in this conversation has seen, whether sure, they man. realize it or not. And I don't want to say what that is. I'll let leave it to Dominic to mention it in the comments if he wants. But he's actually worked on some pretty huge epic stuff that he got some recognition for, and uh, I think he'd be kind of cool on this show. Please, please reach out. We'll make it happen. Uh, Tim D Tim Duncan is saying he's he's basically thanking you guys uh, for your time and he's happy to support uh, all these. Uh, okay, so Sam Sam's going to throw down some knowledge here. I think uh, Ruth might appreciate this trivia as as a Swamp Thing fan. I just listened to an interview with uh, Rick Veitch. Mm -hmm. His last issue of Swamp Thing featuring Jesus Christ is about to be greenlit greenlit for an omnibus. No, oh, wow, kidding. that is but, awesome. But the controversy over Second Coming at DC sunk it. Oh my gosh. What? That's what he said. Oh, shit. You killed Swamp Thing, man? Again? <laughs> you killed the Jesus Swamp Thing story? Oh my God. Man. And I didn't even know it. That's kind of, that kind of sucks. You, <laughs> you didn't even try. God damn it. <laughs> you killed Swamp Thing. Well, hold it. Did I kill Swamp Thing or did DC fuck up yet again? <laughs> yeah, that wow. might be weird. That's, you know, the kind of, that's the kind of power you, uh, you wield, Richard. Nah, I think it was DC. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> no, you don't want to take credit for that. They've been, they've been, every, honestly, it, the great thing is, is D, everyone's so angry at DC right now. Um, oh. I, I could fuck. I could. I could have made a phone call and said, "Hey, don't do this," and everyone would blame DC anyway. <laughs> All right. So you guys got to tell me: does 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 Hellboy have like pupils? <laughs> Nope. Depends. In the movie, he does kind of, but uh, well, because he can't extract them from the actor's eyes. <laughs> ah, okay. So we'll give him no pupils. That makes it easier. I prefer a, a pupilless. Uh, I prefer most of my characters pupilless. I'm not gonna lie. I like a pupilless Batman. I like a pupilless uh, uh, Green Arrow. Uh, you know, Dark Side, uh, Sabretooth. I don't even like pupils on Sabretooth, and he's been done well with pupils before. Uh, but I uh, I prefer him to not have pupils. I am a I am anti pupil. <laughs> anti pupil. I'm you anti pu anti pupil person. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an anti pupil person. P A. That's hard to say. All right. What so, about so a belly button? What's that? <laughs> does he have a Does Hellboy does have, he a have a belly button? Belly button. <laughs> he has a mom, so does he has that? a belly button. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Julian says, is there any comic cover that you'd love to do an homage to, aka, AKA after McFarlane ASM 300? Uh, who would you draw? For that specific cover? Uh, is there any or comic that cover that you'd do an homage to? Mm. So that's an example. So you could do another cover, or you could use that cover. And what would you uh. draw? Um, well, um, I, uh, I'll be honest. I, I, I actually really, 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 really dislike doing homage covers unless uh, it is uh, absolutely necessary, which, it, in my opinion, never is. Um, but I've done a million of them. I've done tons of them because uh, sometimes that's just the way it goes, and uh, that's okay. 
but um, I would probably want to homage. Uh, I'm not sure of the actual issue number, but um, I don't know. I'd probably homage some uh, like Joe Jusco uh, Conans. Or uh, oh, that's cool. I would I would homage some weird like I might homage some weird like Mignola covers of like the Hulk or like you know what I mean like I I wouldn't want to do like the ones that are always done like honestly how many times has AMS you know ASM three hundred been done you know how many times has Hulk one eighty one been done like Hulk three forty Hulk three forty and although I, mean, I, I love that cover but it's yeah, fine. <laughs> and I, mean, I did a, a Hulk three forty homage with my Genica as a mini print it was actually an approved idea like it almost was the cover for my my Genica book you know but it was it's just not something I would often lean towards doing because uh, I feel like when you're given a chance to do a cover it's 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 worth taking seriously and if if, if someone is taking you seriously enough to invest in you to do a cover then they should, take, <laughs> they should take you seriously enough to do a cover that is an original image that maybe one day someone else will want to homage. You know mm. what I mean? Because it's a good cover because not, and not because it's a, it's an easy, you know what I mean? It's an easy score. You know what I'm saying? Does that make yep. any sense? Yeah. yeah Ken I Lashley agree. is saying that homage covers are tough and he hates they doing them tough, as well. Man. I'm glad he the says, it, I'm glad I never have done one. From my yeah, I, did, I did a cover like... for an indie book called Rags, and uh, the gag is that I homaged a panel uh, from a Walt Simonson Thor issue. That's that's about as far as uh, homage I get. Um, although my first New Warriors cover was an homage to uh, Justice with like all the headshots looking up, which it's been done. Oh yeah. As well. Sometimes. Oh, you uh... International one, Justice League International. Uh, no, that the uh, Kevin McGuire arc, yeah. where they put the entire Justice League on the on the was it JLI? Yeah, or yeah, it yeah. Justice League. I thought they got rid of Justice League of America and just called it Justice League when, they, when it was. That I thought it was international. I bet I bet someone's gonna correct me now. <laughs> Julian will know. Someone. Yeah. Yeah. You know, with, with homage covers, it's kind of like you, you're while you're while you're designing it, you're you're thinking of what else you could be doing instead of this homage. It's like, don't think of an elephant. And yeah. all you could do is think about an elephant. <laughs> yeah. <I know. laughs> it's tough. Like, and you want to pay, I mean, you want to truly pay homage, especially if you love the artist. Like in the case of, uh, you know, the Hulk 181, like I, I did one for, uh, uh, I think it was um, Big big Time Collectibles, uh, Nelson Chua's shop. I did one uh, for Kick-Ass. And you know, substituting, oh, right. yeah. substituting Wolverine and, and Wendigo and the Hulk for uh, Kick Ass, um, right? The villain of the story and Hit Girl, and um, and it was a fun piece to do. But it was one of those things where like the work had already been done. If I wanted it to be yeah. a true homage, I'm I'm almost essentially uh, not light boxing because it's completely completely different characters. But it's 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 it's, it's uh, compositionally speaking, completely you know already solved so there's a there's something to that too there's a there's a loss of adventure i guess that's what it is for me that bothers me there's a loss of uh there's a journey when you're doing a cover every time you do a cover if you're given a chance to do something to turn people's heads because the whole point of a cover is to sell the book so if you can sell the book by turning a head by doing something different then that's awesome maybe if you can sell a book by doing something that's been seen a million times and sells more books then maybe that's more awesome i don't know i just know i've done a lot of homage covers and i've always felt i could make something so much better if they just gave me the chance to come up with an original idea that could then maybe if i'm lucky enough or good enough that day or sharp enough that day could become an iconic cover that someone wants to homage another time you know and it's it's just i don't know maybe that's lofty thinking but I, I just feel like it's a it's a loss of opportunity it's a loss of adventure you know yeah. what i mean i agree yeah did that answer your question <laughs> 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 i think so <laughs> <laughs> well like, what are the most homage overly homage covers that's asm 300 sure that's one sure prices uh, seven yeah I think Crisis 7 was probably one of the uh, most egregiously homaged. I mean, someone's always going to be... Actually, no, that was a, that was a, an homage itself to the Burn cover, wasn't it? The X-Men cover. Uh, it might have been, yeah. 
The uh, I think it's is it FF two fifty with the uh, oh, Ooh, you know what, guys? I'm feeling a little sick. Chat. Hang on a second. Yeah, right. <laughs> was it FF two fifty the one that's got Gladiator holding the thing over his head? That John Byrne drawing. Shot. Oh, that, yeah. Oh. Where he, he he swiped himself for that too. Super yeah, Man. he swiped himself a million times at that one. Yeah. Yeah. He did one for Next Men, I think, like that. He did one for uh, for um, uh, he did it for Superman as well, I believe. Well, that was originally yeah. Superman, wasn't it? Wasn't it? Yeah, he um, he did it for X Men, then he did it for Superman, then he did it again for uh, Next Men. Oh God. And then I think he did it again for that trio book he had for IDW. I could be wrong, but uh, which was actually kind it would of been hilarious if he did it for his Star Trek photo things. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, X Men, uh, giant size X Men, <laughs> it's done a few times. Yes. Oh, yeah. I uh, I don't know. I had the best idea for an homage cover, but I didn't use it. I'm not going to say it here, but I told a couple people what it is, but can't Playboy say. Playboy number one. Huh? Playboy number one. No, no, it's a totally. Uh, <laughs> no, it's. I'm gonna save it for a time. That maybe someone comes to me with an homage, and I can fire back with a sketch. But it's, a, it's it's an affront to all homages. It's a thumb to the nose to the idea of no. <laughs> it's an affront. It also comes with a heavier price tag. Yeah. Uh, Sam saying Byrne did it ag again for Marvel Age, with him oh, as the God. monster. Ugh. Oh, right, yeah, of course. Oh, I have an original John Byrne. It's uh, the most awesome thing I think I own. Uh, I got it hey, for really? my four I got it for my 40th birthday. Wow. It's uh I'll get it. Hold on a second. <clears throat> that is awesome. Yeah, my best, uh, my best friend Galacto Dave got me this. Uh, oh for yes, birthday. that is amazing. Actually, he actually called uh, Burns' agent to commission. If I recall the story correctly, he called Burns' agent to get a drawing of the of Blastar for me to add to my collection. And John was all set up to do it. And then, like about a week or so before the before he was set to do it, he his agent called my buddy and, and canceled the job canceled it and he said no he doesn't feel like drawing blaster and dave was kind of like oh shit man like i'm all lined up like you know all ready to go i didn't know it was coming i was completely blindsided regardless and i guess the agent was kind of like well he did have this drawing it's blaster versus the thing <laughs> is that okay <laughs> <laughs> he just happens to have this laying around it was done for like a color sample or something that he wanted to do and it's a beautiful 11 by 17 fully finished piece Wow. And look on Google, if you actually Google John Byrne Blastar versus Thing, it was actually posted, I think, on something like that he did, either someone did a color demo on or someone did like a, you know, they they're, threw some colors down on it. I'm not sure what the drawing was originally purposed for, but it, it's on Google. It's one of the first things that come up. And I have the original in my house and it's pretty crazy. So That's that wild. Yeah. I you guys have, have any? Uh, have you guys have any grails at home, or any what? Uh, any grails or? No, I'm an atheist. Things, things that you think that you, things that you've uh, collected. <laughs> Sorry, man. Oh, like comic book grails. <laughs> yeah, or whatever you know, whatever nerd stuff, nerdum. Yeah, my my, I have the first appearance of uh, Blaster, which is a FF62, which is my. Uh, which was the first kind of real big comic purchase I made as a young man. I was 12 and I think it was uh, $26. And uh, it was an epic amount of money for a 12 year old Mike Ruth. And uh, cause I used to just collect out of, the, out of the 25 cent bin in those days. So, but I, I had to have it because I, I just loved the character so much. And I didn't even think I'd ever have the chance to own it. And the guy who owned the comic shop I grew up with, Lens Odds and Ends in St. Catharines, which is now called Mostly Comics. Um, it, uh, it, it was, I couldn't believe he had it. He had an epic collection and I actually bought a bunch of FF books from him. Uh, I got the first Black Panther, which I unfortunately had to sell a couple of years ago to pay the rent, but I kept my Blastar because I, uh, I, it just, 
that's the first, that was the first uh, big purchase for me. So that's my grail. It's not, uh, it's probably not worth a whole lot of money, to be honest. It's, it might grade out. Oh, it doesn't a, matter. It's what you it want. It might grade out at a 7.2 or an 8.1, maybe. It's not a bad copy, but I, uh, I don't know what it's worth. And um, it doesn't matter. It's worth everything, you know, in a way. So that's what it's worth to you, man. Are you big art collectors? Like, do you get a lot of originals? Uh, you used to do. I try to treat myself every time there's a Comic Con. Uh, if I'm at if I'm at one uh, exhibiting, I try to treat myself to a commission of either Blastar or Thundra. And uh, I have a, a huge Blastar collection. Like I think I have over over ninety pieces now. Of Blastar. That's awesome. And I got like Ben Temple Smith and Leonard Kirk, and you know I got Ty. Uh, uh, I got Dan McDade and. Just a ton of awesome pieces, man. Uh, Mwadib, a friend of mine, Torin Clark, uh, just a beautiful piece. Um, He's so good. He is a monster. That guy is a monster. He'd be another awesome dude to get on this show, Martin. Yep. Torin Clark. What a voice and what a brilliant, brilliant technician. What a brilliant artist. You guys follow him on Instagram. He's Mwadib on Instagram. And he is a, just a giant monster artist. Like, yeah. I think I just oh, shared it. Yeah. Free, you know, rip your know, brains out. Day. I'll reach out for sure. Yeah. I, I know Torin. I don't know. He, he, I'm sure he would join us. He's, I don't know. Maybe he doesn't do the live drawing thing, but uh, man, he is so good. Um, yeah. Just a guy just deserving of a, you know, bigger audience. A big, a big, yeah. project, a big cool project, you know? Very cool. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna share another picture here. So um, for folks that are listening as well, uh, so Sean Daly, um, unfortunately, he's he's a bit busy and he couldn't make the show as well. He was he was he wanted I asked him to come on, uh, but he was what he was nice enough to offer up a piece to also auction for the food bank. So I'm gonna uh, show that right quick here. Sean's a wicked guy, man. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, really nice guy, and a great artist. Um, so he's got this piece, this ghostwriter piece here, um, that we're going to be auctioning off with these other two pieces, the one from Paul and the one from Mike. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So if you also want that, you could start bidding on this as well. So this would be Sean Daly. Um, shout out to Sean if he's listening as well. Really appreciate that. It's going to a good cause. And I'll post this picture up as well um, for the official uh, the official auction. Sweet. Holy cow, Richard! Are you done? <laughs> no. Wow. Good lord! Wow, man. <clears throat> it's fantastic. Oh, that is great. I do like my ink. Yeah. Yeah, I, I can't really think until I start inking sometimes. Like, I just I just try to get the bare bones down because I just want to ink. <laughs> it's all I want to do. Yeah. And I'm terrible at it, but I enjoy it. <laughs> uh, Jason's asking what the minimums to start the auction. I'll say we could probably, I think someone's already bid $100. Like, I'm pretty sure earlier on, um, but I want to say at least, uh, uh, let's see. I don't know. What do you guys think? I, I mean, it's just a start. It's just a starting bid. Let's go. Let's let's go starting at uh, forty dollars, and we'll go by uh, five dollar increments. Sure. Okay. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I almost feel I should throw this one in tonight's auction and then uh, do another one. <laughs> hey, whatever you want to do, man. Yeah. Well, it just feels like an opportunity. It's like, um, yeah, because I mean, it's 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 going to the food bank, and it's like that's my, yeah, that's my big charity. So it's like I'm going. Uh, I know that <laughs> I, I know I can do another. I, <laughs> another well, you help help so I'll do it. You don't want to get Hellboy over with. Like you hate drawing him so much. So. <laughs> I know. Yeah. 
I'm so, I'm so inept at drawing Hellboy. <laughs> you know what? I think you struggle. You clearly struggle drawing with a drawing Hellboy so much. Like I don't know why you torture yourself. Like I, I, I own, I own a uh, a Richard Hellboy. Um, it was actually one of my fr like when I first started, I didn't get a lot of uh, commissions done, and I started this little project where I got these little. I don't feel remember Richard, but I got these little. Um, like card sized. Yeah, I remember. Remember yeah. that? Yeah. yeah. So I got these little card sized ones done uh, very early on, and I got a Hellboy from Richard way back. Nice. Yeah. Tiny, tiny little Hellboy. That's tiny a, Hellboy. It's a crazy nice collection you had put together there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love it. I love it. I might have to bust those out again. Yeah, Maybe we get a few more done. Ooh. Do you guys have any other commissions? <laughs> yeah, I have some. <laughs> yeah, some. I got a couple of yeah. I honestly, yeah. like, I'll be honest. Yeah, me too. With you, uh, I had a bunch, kind of like lined up right around the pan when the pandemic broke out. Like I, I was able to hustle and kind of connect with people who I would have seen to try to get uh, some commissions uh, lined up, knowing that the comic cons were probably going to be canceled. And, I was lucky a lot of people came through and, and still wanted to get commissioned, which is awesome. Uh, but then I, cause I, I was sure like everything else was going to be stopped. Like I didn't think I was going to have any more cover gigs or anything like that. So yeah, I was, I was really lucky to suddenly find myself getting busy doing covers again, like with big country, like not even realizing that that was even going to be something that was happening. So I, now I'm kind of behind on my commissions, but it's because I've been doing covers, which has been, a really unbelievable surprise. Like I, I wasn't expecting to really have any, you know, with uh, everything going on and comics being in the funny place they're at. You know. but, yeah, it's funny. You you expect it to like oh, really die down. Like, over, yeah. Like. Very cool. Uh, yeah, people are people like are dying know? for it, man. I mean, like I mean that that that's a part of the success of what we're doing here as well. Is people people miss it. People miss yeah. the shows. Yeah, I did pick up a couple of cool commissions. I, I got it trying to fit in with uh, all the comic stuff and the food bank stuff. I got a, a, a big Barda granite goodness painting to do. Cool. I got a, a 1950s era version of Venom Eddie Brock as a pop idol. Oh, that's wicked. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Yeah, I have to do a Batman painting. Um, Batman. People still like Batman? No. <laughs> 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 is he on a gargoyle? Tell me he's on a gargoyle. <laughs> no, no, he is not. Oh, man. <laughs> that, that was a concept. I'm like, yeah, we agreed that it was, you know, it's so, he's always on a gargoyle. Yeah, he is. Uh, He's, he's got to be a gargoyle watching crime instead of fighting it. Yeah. I think that's um, the real secret of Bruce Wayne's wealth. He, uh, his family made it, uh, all the gargoyles in Gotham. Yeah. yeah. Wayne Enterprises is actually a gargoyle making company. <laughs> huh. It's like they put it in the city bylaws. How tall is your building? That's 16 gargoyles. What? <laughs> you need a minimum of 16 gargoyles here guys That's eight floors you need four gargoyles <laughs> every floors above yeah. that yeah and every month you have to repair the mysterious grappling hook holes on the gargoyles <laughs> i know right god damn it him, Actually, him, no, and, him and daredevil uh, what the hell a huge chunk of, of <laughs> raw iron in every gargoyle so they're magnetic <laughs> they're magnetic uh <clears throat> uh, Sam wants to know what your favorite Hellboy stories are and who are your favorite Hellboy artists other than Mignola? Hmm. Fregredo. Yeah, without a doubt, Fregredo. Like, uh, guys, Duncan is, uh, well, even Mignola thinks he does a better Hellboy than he does. You know what I mean? Like, it's, uh, the guy's a monster. Um, I like Mike Walsh's story that he did with, uh, mm -hmm with Hellboy, I thought he did a great job handling the character. Um, it's not a character that everyone can draw. It's as simple yeah. as that. There's a, there's a look, he's a challenging character because you're left with a, in a position where you're either, you know, you're either trying to ape what, what the creator uh, 
has done with the character or you're trying to come up with your own thing and your own thing is going to be wrong, you know, most of the time. Unless you're, <laughs> unless you're Richard Hayes, who kills it every time he does it. Um, so I, I don't know. It's a, it's, he's a challenging character. He's a very challenging character. And I, I don't feel like I ever quite get him right because the closest that I get to getting him right is the closest I get to aping Mike Mignola in a way. Like it's, uh, so that's why I always try to approach it with paint if I can. Like I need to do this one for speed purposes, but like I would actually try to just to separate myself as much as I can from the from the classic look. It's hard to avoid. I mean, you want them to look like Hellboy, and if it doesn't look like Hellboy, then it doesn't look like Hellboy. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Kind of... Actually, you know who does a great Mignola style Hellboy? Who's that? Uh, Joe Casada. Oh yeah, I imagine. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Really? He gets he gets that 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 nineties era Mignola Hellboy head structure. Perfect. Oh yeah. Man, have you guys been seeing Mignola's charity drawings? Oh, this drawing? oh, yeah, yeah. Auction for like, oh my god! Like every one of them was kind of like the 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 thundercat series the classic monster series the, oh yeah yeah i've seen these these, like, yeah 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 that new character that they're sick glass kind of like uh he had a name for him like space something or other i can't, I can't remember but uh if you just go and check out uh you know art of mm art of mignola uh um instagram you'll see all of his drawings he's done since since this thing broke out and they are staggering and what's what's amazing is a lot of artists have actually like downloaded his pencils and inked them and then like colored them and done their own prints like kind of their own their own takes based on Mike's work and they all look fantastic like yeah guy just has a thing that no one else can do there's just something he does that and he wasn't the kind of artist that I enjoyed very much as a kid like I was more into guys like you know like Mike Grell and you know, yeah. John, John Buscema and like, um, you know, Ron Franz and then that, that kind of more like, you know, classic kind of Marvel hero sort of stuff. So like, I loved his, I loved his work on Hulk, like the covers, because they were so different, but I didn't like his work on Alpha Flight, but then he was kind of following John Byrne. So it was kind of a tough, tough act to follow in that, on that book. But uh, Kyle says Corbin. Yeah, Corbin yeah, does. Yeah, Corbin does like Hellboy. Hellboy. Yeah, he does. Uh, Casey says Sinkovitz has colored over a few of those recent Sinkovich? Mignolas. Yeah, yeah Sinkovitz. Sorry, <laughs> my bad. Yeah. Everything Bill does is awesome. Yeah, yeah. Bill's Bill's a mutant. Yeah, he's not human. You know why he's not know. human? Because I've met the guy and <laughs> as real and kind as any person you've ever met in your life. And it just doesn't seem like it fits with the guy who does look like that. You just figure this guy is going to be this, like, I don't know, you think he's going to be a jerk, and you find out he's actually the most humble, nicest guy. Like, yeah. super, super awesome when you find that, you know? Yeah. Paul, that's looking great, man. What? Yeah, slow and steady. That's going to be a cool, that's a cool take. How are we doing for time, by the way? I don't want to. Uh, it's quarter past eight, so we got forty-five minutes. <laughs> All right. Good heavens! All right. Wow! Just did a very fun. Oh, want... oh sorry. Go ahead. Wow, no, no. Um, go ahead. What? Ah, you guys are killing me. How how you feeling, Mike? You feeling any better? Uh, I'm shaking a wee bit. Uh, wow. How we're shaking? Well, that's good for textures. Got a bit of dizziness. That's good for textures. <laughs> oh my oh god. Man, god. <laughs> <laughs> Once I get my washes engaged here. Uh, <laughs> oh my gosh. I think I'm all right though. I uh. I didn't think it was this hot. And I've also got more hair on my head than I have had uh, in my life ever. Uh, so it's, uh, it's very warm all the time. And with my beard, it's like I'm basically wearing a sheep on my head 
all the time <laughs> around my neck. <laughs> it's like having a scarf on all the time. And now with the hair, it's like, a, it's like I, well, you were talking about, you were talking about uh, Gene Simmons earlier. You know, yeah. Gene Simmons has that, when he's not in costume and he's not on stage, you see him in like a terrible 80s movie or something like that, where he's got his hair combed and it's that weird yeah. cuffy, it's like that cuffy. What, runaway? Cuffy. Yeah, like Runaway. Runaway is fantastic. It's amazing. So it's got, <laughs> that, it's got that like dome of, of black hair. It's like a perfect dome. Yes. If I get out of the shower and slick my hair back, it dries in that perfect dome. It is, uh, it is terrifying. Do I have a beard trimmer? Oh, so I got nothing, I man. Like I used to have a wicked hard. trimmer. Is that why we can only see your hands, Mike? Yeah, that's why no one see my Everything face. Everything else is hair. Yeah, my, <laughs> hair, uh, my hair is a sight. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. Actually, I got to get a little bit of water for my uh, gouache. I'll be right back. Gouache? Right. Oh, fancy guy with the gouache going on. Jeez. Mike's injured, right. guys. It's not fair. No, no, no. This is like... <laughs> no, I feel like I shouldn't have said nothing, but... I, I, no, but this is Mike's like flu slash food poisoning Michael Jordan game. Uh, <laughs> I feel uh, that's what we're gonna call it the Ruth from now on. I feel a little <laughs> the it's the Ruth Ruse. <laughs> I feel a little dizzy. I'm not gonna lie, but oh, it's, all right. it's all right. I'm sorry, I'm sorry man. <laughs> no, no, it's cool. It's cool. It's all good. It's all good. I'm just vomiting off camera. And, it's okay. Yo, know, believe me. Uh, Thanks a I lot, vomit, Martin. Thanks. The way I vomit, if I if I do vomit off camera, everyone listening to this will know. If I was to cross the street and do it there, they'd still know. The whole you town know, of it knows when I'm sick, man. There is a good chance you get a little bit more DNA on your uh, on your piece. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mixed media. Mixed yeah, media. Mixed, mixed media. I like that. I will <laughs> quarantine the piece for like a good couple of weeks before I. Require, <laughs> but you should be okay. <laughs> get some mic sweat. Yeah, like these fresh drops are just like that's that's you know, there's like sweat. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I gotta put like a barrier. Oh, over. we got a bidding war now. I was kidding. <laughs> <laughs> a bidding war for me. <laughs> Wheat. <laughs> sweat. Just for the bottom half. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually thinking I might trim the bottom half off. <laughs> Because uh, it might actually start to warp because it's not like super thick paper and it's actually getting kind of soaked. So uh, I may put a headband on in a sec here. My elf looks a little tougher now that he has uh, he has some sideburns. You got hell elf going on there? Yeah, a little bit. Health boy? Yeah, Health boy. He, he's, he's channeling a little bit of Wolverine too, I think. That's all right. It's my interpretation. There you go. Any more questions? Let's see. I got it. I got a question. All right. Shoot. Um, what do you guys think of this, the quality of paper for sketch covers? It's better than it used to be. Sorry, the quality really? of paper for sketchbooks? Sketch covers. covers. Oh, sketch covers. <clears throat> yeah, they, yeah, I guess they're better than they used to be. I mean, the, they were originally friggin' terrible. Some of them were just unbelievably bad. Um, some of them still are, frankly, but uh, yeah, they're, I don't know. The more the more recent ones have been pretty solid, man. Uh, and they're oh, colored yeah. ones they're making. They've made these black ones, and they've made like I know they're super rare, but they made blue ones for uh, for Thor, and they made uh, I know they made the different range of colored ones for the Turtles book because I've seen Adam Gorham drawing on different colored books, and they that looks to be a pretty decent stock drawn. I know the black ones from Marvel are. Are pretty good to paint on they're not they don't you know they're, they're pretty sturdy and uh not too bad so um oh, okay yeah i haven't i, I haven't seen like, any of the color ones yeah I've, I've only got my hands on a couple like the i had a purple a couple of purple jokers and some uh pink harley quinns and they're actually lovely to draw on uh i found them really nice to draw on uh because you can get your whites to kind of pop and you know the, the highlights can really kind of jump off the page when you have that tone base they have a better tooth, I guess, um, than the before. Because before it was like glossy paper. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's not glossy so much. It's it's more matte, but it's not much of a tooth to it. No, I still wouldn't uh, recommend doing washes of any kind unless you're doing uh, 
like unless you got a board kind of separating the the cover from the first page like i'll sometimes slip a backing board in between while i'm working because the backing board is slightly bigger than the comic book or i'll just look at a piece of like nine by twelve paper in there just to cover any overspill because nothing makes me more crazy than doing the sketch cover that i know someone's going to try to get graded and while I don't really care about that grading stuff myself, uh, and I don't really, you know, when it comes to making the artwork, the most important thing is making good artwork, not worrying about the condition of the book. But that said, I try, and uh, nothing makes me madder than being really careful with a book and handing a perfect, uh, perfect condition book that has a drawing on it and have it come back as like a 9.1 or something like that, because somehow you got a dot of ink on the first page of the comic book during the process of making the art. Uh, such a strange thing like i've had i've literally had books that i've set on fire and had them come back at like over nine with grades so I, <laughs> yeah like, you yeah. know what i mean it doesn't make any sense to me it's so bizarre yeah i was uh, just gonna ask that i don't understand You're like the yeah. back is so dirty <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> it's a part of the art yeah. yeah it's crazy i put down a clean sheet of paper underneath usually I try to make sure I'm not moving the artwork around too much. Frankly, to be honest with yeah. you, my quote's going to be graded. I actually lately have been doing my drawing. Like I'll do a drawing on like a piece of paper and then I will get it roughly to scale. Like I'll even, you know, roughly trace the shape of the comic book and roughly plot out where the, where the masthead is. Do my, do a sketch on paper and then carbon the back with like some Conte or something and then just card transfer it on. That way you're not spending any time erasing or beating up the cover that I'm working on. And it maybe saves Smart. it a little yeah. bit of, uh, you know, it saves it a little bit. It adds a little bit more time, but it might save the condition of the book a little bit more if you're concerned. Like I try to be as courteous as possible with my people that I know are definitely getting stuff graded. But at the end of the day, you know, the art has to prevail, not the condition of the book. Yeah, it's it, it's kind of stressful, eh? It's it like, it's it's like you, it's, some guys just don't care. They're just like, yeah, you're gonna get a seven on this because I beat the living crap out of this book. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, wow, I got a I got I a bet, question from. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. That, but but then I was, I was just gonna say like, when you're when you're drawing it, you know that they're gonna get graded. You're wondering, are they gonna sell this afterwards? Well, this is it. <laughs> right. Like, do they not want this or are they just going to, are they going to like get um, rid of it? Yeah, people are, I'm like, I guess, like, I, I get that. Like, I understand people want a higher grade for food turnaround. I've seen people turn around, like, when I see artwork like that get turned around, in a, you know, in a, on eBay, I always like to hope it's because they're going to use that money to buy art from someone else. You know what I mean? Like, that's, yeah. and that's, you know, that, that's, that's what all you can really hope. But at the end of the day, you don't get to control that, you know? Right, I heard, yeah. I did sketch cards for uh, professional sketch companies for five bucks a card. And I watched them get flipped for 300 on eBay sometimes. And I don't get any of that money. It makes me crazy, you know, but that's just the nature of the way it goes. Like, it is. But I, I mean, I, I personally have gotten some uh, books rated, but they're for me personally. Right. So, sure, yeah. I mean, it, it, it kind of depends. Um, so I got a couple of questions here. Uh, what changes would you like to see at conventions now that they've had time to reevaluate and redesign what shows could be like? Would you guys I like? I don't know if they spent much time actually rethinking anything. No, no, but we'll, we'll, we'll pretend we have power here. Oh, <laughs> what's, the, what's the question? It's what shows would... Uh, what, what changes would you like to see at, uh, at convention shows? Oh. oh. Uh... Um... I don't know, man. Like I, uh, uh, hmm. I don't know how we're going to go back. I, I don't know if this answers the question, but I, I don't know how or how long it's going to be until we get back mm. to a place where we can have, you know, lineups and bathroom lineups and volumes of people that make anything like that even a viable possibility in the future. I, I hope I'm wrong. I hope things go back to normal and everything will be good. But like, it's it's a it's been a, a such a change a, such a change to how people operate on both sides of the table in that scenario that I'm not really sure how we're going to get back to that. Um, so I guess if comic cons were going to happen, we'd need to do it in a way that made sense. But I, I'm still struggling to find out what that would be. Like when you figure people are coming to get book signed and sketches in their book, and they hand me their book and I take their book and I sweat on their book and draw on their book and fingerprint up their book and hand it back to them or 
you know, sign a book and hand it back to them. I mean, this is a transference. This is a, this is contact. And, uh, I don't know, man. It's a, I don't know. <laughs> I, uh, I mean, I, I, would safety precautions, would safety screening, would, would masks and, and all that stuff, which will probably be a must anyway. But if they go into play, is it going to make it even an attractive place to do business, and an attractive place to do business, like to, to, you know, to sell or buy? Like, I don't know. Um, yeah, it's a tough question. Uh, I, th I think everybody's got their own perspective, right? It depends on what they want to do. Like I'm, I'm personally um, more interested in the artists, right? Than necessarily the celebrities. So that's, that's a changing thing. Um, now, at least what they've done is they've sort of separated the groups. It seems so a little bit more, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, I, I, you know, I would, I would just like more access to be, to be honest uh, in terms of the art and artists. But, well, I think certain shows will do that too. Like, uh, I know yeah. a lot of shows uh, have epic large numbers at their shows because they have the celebrity component. But like, um, <laughs> there's shows out there that like, well, not yeah. too. But like, when I think about uh, when I think about Heroes in Charlotte, you know, Sheldon runs this show. It's like 35, 36 years now, and uh, this will probably be the first one. That I guess it hasn't happened, and that's a pure comics art show there's no cosplayer guest there's no guest of any nature other than comic book artists and comic book creators and you want to talk about a show that gives you access to, to to people easy access you know lots of space it's a it's a cra it's a crazy show for that it's a really amazing show for that um so yeah i don't know it's uh <clears throat> yeah sorry i'm not even sure i was going with that but there are shows. <laughs> it's the fever, actually. man. It's the fever. You were talking about that. <laughs> that's, that's the show. Like, that's the one that, that you know, that my, and, you know, another one would be like the East Coast Expo, which would have happened this weekend. Uh, yeah. Yep. So, again, it's another one that is, it's pure comics. And it's a pure focus on comics. And it's not a giant show, but it is, you know, it is a show where you can really connect with people and people who love comics can really spend some quality time with the people that make them and, and have close access to them. So I love shows like that. And, and I actually, I don't know, I don't mind if shows don't get so crazy big. Like, obviously, I miss the really big shows. And, you know, I, I can't see Fan Expo running this year, but, it, you know, I'll miss it. Like, I miss all. Yeah, for sure. A lot of people miss it. Um, Ken Lashley actually suggests that comics should be getting higher billing sometimes they're below cosplayers at most shows yeah, I, yeah. I i yeah. i make it a rule i don't do a con that uh doesn't have at least one comic pro as a headliner yeah i mean, yeah. so like that niagara show i don't do it hmm. yeah yeah although i probably yeah, took it off on people <laughs> <laughs> i've been pissing off a lot of people lately so <laughs> yeah yeah. Um, <laughs> Carlos uh, Carlos Camara uh, says hi. He says Carlos. three great artists Carlos. and one great podcast host. Ah. <laughs> three great ar artists. Oh. oh, Carlos, we all miss you, man. Miss hanging out. Yes. Shop. Miss the uh, awesome experience of going there. Gotham yeah. Central, guys. Uh, awesome, awesome shop. Uh, Eric wants awards, to know who wants to go to Charlotte with him. Huh? <laughs> Eric wants to know who's going to Charlotte with him. He wants to go to the Charlotte show. Oh man, it's such a good show. It's like honestly, ugh, Erica and I love it when we go there. We see, it's one of the only chances we get to see like a great deal of our friends from from the states in one spot too, because they're all there. It's and like it's uh, it's just a super cool show. The drink and draw that they do there is a, just a gigantic event. It raises money for charity and they. The, oh, it's just so cool, man. It's just so cool. I can't say enough good about that show. I missed it in 20, I think the last time I was there was 2015, 2016. So it's been far too long. Yeah, here uh, is the Mercy show. Mercy says, uh, wow, looking at all the pieces. Sorry, what was that, Richard? Uh, I was going to try and make Heroes this year for the first time. Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna go on my bike. Uh, my buddy Mike Ringo was uh, still around. Oh yeah, yeah. And then he kind of passed the year I was gonna go. It, I got the worst luck when it, I was gonna. I was gonna go to the Frazetta Museum. 
Oh man, uh, his wife passed, and all those shenanigans started. Yeah. Uh, I was gonna go to San Diego the year that Kirby died. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Ostensibly just to meet Kirby, right? Yeah. And it was like, oh man. So I, I think I'm, I, I think it's me. I think I'm killing people. Richard, you're scaring me here a little bit now. <laughs> <laughs> he, was actually, he, uh, made, he made he made the sketchle mania for us so there we go <laughs> i think he was that, actually now we know why mike's sick so yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> what happened i think mike. uh i think heroes actually honored mike waringo uh waringo this year actually uh or was it last year at the the 35th anniversary they had like a they, they, he was a part of, I believe, some kind of big memorial event for, for Mike. Um, I never knew Mike. And the funny thing is, I never, I love his work. I, I've, I've loved everything I've seen him draw. I, I never got to meet him or really knew who he was. And I'm like probably the only FF guy in the world who missed entirely his FF run, which is many people's favorite FF run. And I've never read it because it was just a, during a whole chunk of years where I just wasn't buying any comics at all. And I regret it. Like they're hard to kind of harder to get now, but uh, I thought there was an omnibus. Oh, there probably is. Yeah, yeah. I just don't uh, typically go for the bigger books like that. I'm just buried alive in books and years. <laughs> but I do enjoy the work a lot. I just it's a run of uh, of uh, of FF that I never read though. Are you guys uh, are you guys still reading um, paper comics, or have you gone to the uh, the digital route? I still read paper. Yeah. Yeah, if, if I can get paper, I'll read paper. But because of where I am, I'm doing digital. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what is, what is the scene yeah. out in Thailand? The comic uh, scene? Every, everything, or almost everything, uh, is back open, it seems. Uh, okay. Pubs are still closed. But like uh, theaters are open again, but you can't eat in them. Um, but... Uh, you know, every other seat, wherever you go, uh, like if you're on the subway or something, every other seat is has an X on it, so you can't sit. So they're still doing social distancing here. Good. Um, yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, theaters, you have to sit every other seat. Um, you know, subways, I don't know about buses. Uh, restaurants, uh, uh, if you're at a table for four, two of the two of the seats have an X in it. So it's only a table for two and you have to sit diagonally. Oh, okay. The person you're with. Even if you live with your wife, you have to sit across from her. No kidding. Wow. <laughs> yeah. But there's a more common use of masks sort of in general, I think, eh? Like where you are? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because because of the air quality here. Right. Uh, everybody is wearing a mask uh, already. So it's the norm. Right. So, like, uh, there aren't as many people wearing masks nowadays as there was maybe a couple of weeks ago, but there's still, a ma it seems like a majority or maybe like 50% of people outside are still wearing a mask. Right. But before it was like pretty much 100%. Wow. Yeah. And then um, everywhere seems to do. Uh, temperature checks on your forehead so it's like they're pointing a gun at your forehead <laughs> to oh, check yeah. the temperature yeah you go into a 7-eleven but before you go you have to get a temperature check you go into a mall or another store if you oh, go into a mall sorry yeah yeah wow but if, if you go into a mall and then you go into a store within a mall they also do a temperature check huh and then uh and there's this thing they have here now where you have to uh, check in on your phone. So you scan a QR, QR code at the entrance and then you have to check in. And then before you leave, you have to check out. Huh. Yeah. And then of wow. course there's hand sanitizer here. If you go to a more, uh, I guess, uh, a more wealthy store or a mall, then um, they'll have thermal cameras um and some places they have mats with i guess some sort of sanitizer for your feet so you walk over it and it sanitizes your feet <laughs> wow yeah yeah there's this one mall that uh that is probably the most high-end mall in at least bangkok and 
they instead of a mat for your feet they have a mister <laughs> and uh you walk through it and it like sprays i guess some sort of sanitizer on your feet <laughs> so your shoes are clean oh my god <laughs> yeah so uh it seems like they're taking it very seriously here that sounds like it and then it's, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's working then then that's i don't know man i, I feel like there's the fever's got him again. Not, <laughs> not, not, I, got, I, I got some more questions. Sure. All right, let's shoot. Um, okay. Who is the best monster in Marvel DC's catalog? And who would you want to draw a miniseries of? Best monster. Uh, best monster in Marvel and DC's catalog? Yeah. Hmm. Well, for me, DC, the best monster has to be Swamp Thing, I guess. Uh, for Marvel, is the thing a monster? Because that's an easy one. And there's monster. I think if so. You're talking, if you're talking, I mean, so he'd be my favorite monster. I always look at him more like a prince than a monster myself, but that's just me being a fanboy of Ben Grimm. But I, uh, I think, uh, yeah, I guess he's probably my favorite monster of all time in that movie. Um, and then miniseries, I'd be too terrified to draw a Ben Grimm miniseries. Um, I don't think I'd be able to do it the way it should be done. <laughs> Maybe uh, I could. I don't know. I'm sure you but, got uh, it. The story that I've always wanted to do is one that Howard Chaykin actually kind of hinted at in his, in his uh, Avengers story that he did uh, a few years ago. He did the Avengers Initiative, or it was like Avengers 67, I think. I don't know how widely loved it was. I, I enjoyed the hell out of it, but it was like an early version of the Avengers uh, that was supposed to be like, it was made up of like uh, Craven the Hunter and Sabretooth and Namorita and uh, Namora. Oh, wow. And uh, and Nick Fury and uh, a few other people, and there was a moment that Howard just hinted at in the story that never got followed up on. And no one ever touched it again, and it was this moment where where Craven the Hunter and Sabretooth look at each other, and there's instant recognition, and Hunter's like you, and and and, and Sabretooth is like Africa. He sound, he looks at them and they're face to face, and then the team has to keep them apart because they're going to tear each other apart. And I thought, that's the story that I want to draw. I want to draw the story where Craven the Hunter is trying to hunt Sabretooth in Africa. Because I think you'd have a great opportunity to, to introduce some other, you know, interject some other characters in and maybe throw, throw some other, you know, some, just have some fun with it. But I always love the idea. I love the, the whole color scheme even of Craven with similar colors to, uh, to Sabretooth's costume, you know. And I just think it would be a beautiful book. Uh, to draw them hunting each other or some kind of combination of that, you know. They can always start out with like Sabretooth and Wolverine or in a duel and, you know, Craven interferes or something like that. And I don't know. There's so many ways you can go with it. But I mostly think of fight scenes in my spare time. But that's one yeah, thing. What, what I'd do is you'd, I would set it up where Craven's hunting Wolverine and he ends up finding Sabretooth. Something like that. Yeah. Like, but you couldn't really yeah. have Wolverine being involved somehow. But yeah, I, uh, something like that would be super fun. Actually, no. Okay, and then the gag is Wolverine set up Sabretooth because Sabretooth keeps kicking his ass. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I used to love the days when Wolverine I would read that. would defeat Sabretooth. Like, when he was actually terrified when Sabretooth would come around because yeah. Sabretooth was going to kick his ass. Like oh, every, he would whip him every time. Every time. And, you know, and he, oh, Logan was always like, he's bigger than me and faster and his claws are more deadly and he's meaner than I am. And, and you know, and it's always like he, well, we always did he always does pretty good, but Sabretooth used to whoop him every time. He was great. I used to I used to read those comics, and then as a kid, I'd be like, "This is going to be the time. This is where Wolverine's going to take him." No. Yep. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> it's always like uh, Thor and Hulk. Those fights are a thing in Hulk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, Renee wants to know if uh, Carol Baskin killed her husband. <laughs> if what? <laughs> Carol Baskin killed what? Her husband. Her husband. Oh God. Uh, That's a joke. I still haven't watched that. <laughs> you know what? I, I I'll be honest with you. 
based on what I saw, I think she probably did. But uh, but I yeah, I, I uh, they're all wacky people, man. That show was one of the saddest friggin' things I ever watched in my life. It, sad <laughs> it was all about animal abuse, and it was sad because it was about really messed up. It was awful, man. It, and everybody watched. I watched it. It was everybody a nightmare. Watched it. Yeah. It was crazy, I, man. I remember watching it like first time. Well, only time I watched it really, honestly. <laughs> Hopefully, I'd, people didn't watch it more than once. But I thought when they introduced Carol, I thought she was going to be the protagonist of the show. Yeah, yeah, and it, she's just as crazy. Then, yeah, just as yeah. crazy, man. She's just crazy in a different way, but she's crazy as a shit house rat, as my dad would say. You know, so um, just just a time check. Sorry, sorry, Mike. Uh, yeah. It's 8.41, just letting you know. 8.41. All right, I'm trying to find my ink now. Let's see. Um, another question here. Uh, this is from Dominic. Gentlemen, what is your earliest, fondest, and positive Comic-Con experience? And then there's a follow-up. Now, what was the worst? <laughs> oh. Oh, man. That's a loaded one. Yeah, yeah. early and fondest yeah. probably aren't the same thing uh, in my case. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe the earliest was the worst. I don't know. <laughs> um, I don't know. I think uh, uh, there's so many crazy stories, man. There's so many things that only happen in Comic Cons. It's kind of hard to say. Like, uh, yeah. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> um, really well, Dominic, Dominic asked the question so I can say that definitely one of the things that is most memorable for me was when we were in Montreal and we all got to uh, uh, hang out with uh, I became friends with Simon Bisley and we all hung out together oh, and cool. Dominic was with us as well as our uh, friend um, uh, Brendan Yap who's now passed away oh, and, Brendan, um, I and Brendan Yap was there with um, Pete Dixon and all the guys from um, from um, um, Paradise Comics and Paradise, it was a yeah. very very memorable evening a very memorable night um, for me as a fan boy and also just for me as a professional it was a it was a big level up for me and uh, getting to meet Simon and, and becoming instant kind of fast friends with them was just something I wasn't expecting to happen and I'm wearing a thing and he gave me actually this uh, wristband is something I uh, I've worn oh, threw away the thong yeah, I threw away the thong and the butt plug, but uh, I kept, <laughs> kept the uh, badass. Well, are we going to auction that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mike has so much to auction. <laughs> <laughs> Mike always has something to offer. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was a cool experience, though, and, and I know uh, it was one of the last times I got to hang out with uh, Brent, Brendan in a real, you know, we were, we just, we tore we tore Montreal down, man. It was it was it was wicked, and uh, oh. and um, it was a good fun time. And and uh, yeah, Dominic was there, so that that definitely rings out as a very very powerful memory for me, a very fond one. Worst one? That's tough, man. That's that's uh, maybe the time that Jake the Snake ripped me off the phone call uh, that he was supposed to make for me. But that would be probably the worst. That wasn't a bad experience. That was just an expected experience. But um, yeah. Was this uh, was this a recent Jake the Snake or was this? Yeah, it was a couple of years. Taking his medicine, Jake the Snake. <laughs> no, he was like, he's like, yeah, come back in fifteen minutes, and I'll uh, be, uh, I'll, they'll do that call for you. And I was like, sweet, here's the money. And then I showed uh, up, showed up twelve minutes later, and his booth was gone, like he was never there. <laughs> oh, Mike, his name is Jake the Snake. Yeah, <laughs> it's expected, yeah. man. It's all good. Yeah. Woo! Am I first? Earliest. Are you done? I think I'm done. Let's have a look. Boom. Wow. What? Nice. Wow, man. You killed it, dude. That's awesome. Had to throw some splatter in there. I might throw a little bit more splatter in there. That is great. Someone's going to get a nice piece, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For a good cause. Yeah. Very cool, man. Yeah. Thank you. So what was your uh, how about experience, uh, Richard or, or Paul? You guys got any Comic-Con uh, 
things? I don't think I've ever been to a Comic Con. <laughs> <laughs> What, what, what you the go. They're cool. They like guys like you there. It's awesome. Really? <laughs> yeah, that's what I hear. They like you, man. I don't know. I don't know. It sounds dubious. <laughs> You've been to a celebrity con. Actually, I picked this up in Chicago. Here we go there. What? Okay. It looks like nail polish. Right. Yeah. Oh, that stuff's awesome. Yeah. I've never seen that before. Is it Kopec? Is that Kopec? Yeah, it's Kopec. Yeah. White. With yeah. the wee tiny little brush. Oh, so it's got a short bristle. See, I had one that's got a longer, uh, like a longer brush. The whole, the whole stem of it's the brush. And after a few uses, it became this hairy nightmare to try to use. Uh, but that Copic stuff's pretty good. I guess they've changed the design though. That looks like a different bottle than the one I had. The one I had is kind of a weird, kind of more tapered bottle. I think. Uh, so maybe they've changed it. Maybe they got some feedback. That looks cool. Nice opaque, uh, opaque white too, eh? Like it's pretty yeah. solid. Yeah. It's uh, and I just whenever I go someplace, I always spend money on art supplies. Yeah. Uh, I went to a Dick Blick, Dick Blick in Chicago. Oh my God, I've been there. Oh my God. That's a, that place is Shangri La, man. That place is like unbelievable. Uh, Apparently, it's not the biggest one either. No. <laughs> wow. wow. It's, it's like the two-story one, right? That's the two-story art store, the one in Chicago. Yeah. It's got yeah. like escalators and shit, yeah. Yeah. Art supplies, man. It's like paradise. It's like, uh, I couldn't believe it. I could not believe it when I was there. <laughs> Although, I had a really great experience in Louisville. There was this tiny little, like, I, I completely forgot to pack my art kit, so I went to an art supply store in Louisville. And... Um, and it was so packed with stuff. It was just your standard little, I think it was about the size of a 7-Eleven. Right. And it was just everything. I, I bought some art supplies there that I haven't seen anywhere else. Wow. So that That's was cool. uh, that, that was a fun experience. Casey says that you might be able to get these at Michael's now. <sighs> oh, but Michael's. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us what you really think, Richard. <laughs> I got a Michael's like. Hop, skip, and a jump away from my apartment, and I, I, I would rather drive 40 minutes in traffic to the closest above ground. Yep. Than go to the Michaels like a uh, uh, two minute walk away. I'll only go to Michaels if I have yeah. like if I'm loaded with about eight of those 40 percent off coupons, man, because <laughs> yeah. that's the only way to bring it down to slightly higher than regular art store price. That's right. Yeah, you, you need the other yeah. coupons. Yeah, that's right. more, huh? I don't think they do the coupons anymore. They got some sort of online app now. Oh, that yeah, that's yeah. I know Erica usually gets uh, gets some like she's like, oh, there's forty percent off. Let's go get you that one brush you want, <laughs> or something. You know, <laughs> that one yeah, Copic marker. It was, it was sad when they opened up under what used to be the Paramount Theater, right? Yeah, uh, on Richmond. It's like, what is this doing here? It used to be a chapter. <laughs> <laughs> you just started a, a whole bunch of people talking about Michaels and how how it's the worst. Oh yeah, I know. People <laughs> yeah. But in a pinch, it's open usually, and it's the place you might be able to get. You know what? Yeah, I hate to say it. Usually close. I love that tan paper, that scrap more paper. Uh, there's not a lot of art stores that used to. They, a lot of them carry it now, but for a while, the only one that did was, was around, like in any kind of regularity, was Michaels, and it was re it was reasonably cheap actually, like. Um, but uh, yeah, it was hard to find elsewhere. Uh, but Michael's always had it, and I was always grimacing about it, you know. And um, yeah, there's erasers that I like too. These Scholar uh, erasers. Uh, this is like my favorite kind of eraser that I use here. It's uh, they only they sell them at Michael's, and they're like expensive. They used to be a dollar. Now they're like seven dollars. And if you look on like Amazon, they they can be as high as seventy five dollars. They're they're an amazing Whoa. eraser. I love this eraser. I bought. I buy them every time I see them. Like, Michaels, they're like six or seven dollars for an eraser, and I have a fundamental problem with that. But it is a you know, at the end of the day, it's it's my favorite eraser, so that's the one that I get. Um, yeah, Michaels. What I was there uh, downtown at the at the downtown location with a friend, and we're walking through it, and then I look at the uh, cash cashier, and she's helping this guy. I'm like. Is that Guillermo del Toro? <laughs> and and uh, me and my friend were talking. Like he looks too 
homeless to be Guillermo del Toro. <laughs> And, and then I find a picture later, and it was actually him. It was him. He's just it homeless enough. Yep. Yeah. I'm like, what is he doing in Michael's? <laughs> what are you doing in my town, Del Toro? <laughs> <laughs> What'd you guys think of the Del Toro uh, Hellboy movies, now that we brought his name into this? I enjoyed them. I, I got to be honest. Yeah. Uh, I wasn't really into Hellboy until I saw the movie. No, that's fair. And then I went back and and sort of rediscovered the the comics at that point. Yeah, I didn't see the more recent one, the 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 latest version. It's um, it's you what? <clears throat> you know what? We'll save that for another day. It's a yeah. It's a Hellboy movie, kind of. <laughs> Uh, well, it was it was it was kind of panned, wasn't it? Generally, well, it, it, they just they get so many things wrong that uh, yeah. there's so many things they could have done. It's one of those movies where at the end of it, you're like, man, I can't believe they did that, and they did it so well. But you know what would have been cool if they did all of the major stuff that way instead of just not even touching that at all. And mm. it just kind of forces this weird relationship with Hellboy and his dad that don't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. It's like this, it's just very. It's like the teen, the, the angsty teenage adventures of cranky. I uh, have a zit on my forehead, Hellboy. Like it's a very, it's a very <laughs> teenage okay. cranky problems Hellboy, and I, uh, I, I feel like it was an un- unfortunate letdown um, for me. I, I don't know. There was a lot of things that could have been more awesome. Ugh, and then there was some stuff that was just like <laughs> shut up, you know. But, <laughs> But the look of it, I like. <laughs> yeah, I, I like yeah. the actor too. Like I, was, I like him from. Yeah. He could have yeah, been. He could have been great, but he played Hellboy's character wrong to my to my understanding of the character. He played him, just played him. I don't know. I guess he was putting his own stamp on the character, but that's, I don't know, maybe not the best place to do it. Yeah, it's hard to tell where where a movie goes wrong sometimes. Yeah, it, it, I think it went wrong when the studio got involved and said you can't do it R-rated. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that happens. It seems to be all movies that, that go the wrong way is always about, you know, the... Bl- blame the suits. Producers or whatever. Yeah, the suits. The suits. Yeah. Well, the big telling point was the director didn't go on tour to promote the movie. Yeah. Okay. It just... Uh, I don't know, man. There's a lot of things that they... I guess at the end of the day, I kind of wish they would just focus their energies on doing really good animated, uh, animated productions that were close to the to the source material, like closer to the source material. Like, I'm not saying you know you can't stray from the course a little bit. Like that can be a good thing in some cases. You know, you right. can you can condense storylines. Like I'm, I know I'm probably in the mini- in the minority in this, but I actually really like the V for Vendetta movie. Like I, I don't care. Like I, I I enjoy the hell out of it. I watch it every year. With is that right? And, um, you know, is it, this, is it better than the comic book? Well, no, of course not. But in a way, it's more condensed and simplified, and it's not as laborious as the comic book, and it essentially tells the same story. It, so I don't know. It's, I don't know. Did, did you get a chance, uh, now we're a little bit on this tangent, but did you get a chance to see the Watchmen uh, show? No, I didn't. I didn't no, I haven't. It. It's fantastic. I heard it was great, yeah. yeah. Yeah, really, really great. It actually, it, for me, it actually made me appreciate the original comic even more. That's the that that's show. the highest praise I've heard. I've heard that from a few people. Yeah, I, uh, I'm I'm always uh, skeptical about anything. You know, any additional material to to Watchmen. Like I couldn't support any of the stuff that was going on with DC, like the you know the new Watchmen stuff that they did, and I just didn't care. Like I. The only the only outside comics DC uh, outside uh, you know material of the Watchmen that was even accepted in the old days was was the stuff that they did for the DC Heroes uh, role playing game, which yeah. was the Watchmen Companion that I own that I own that I've had since since it came out. Oh yeah, <laughs> and it's uh, it's got actually like a back back matter on the Minutemen and stuff that didn't exist in in the, in the comic book at all. So. I'm hoping that that show took some of the cues from that because it was great material in there. And it was actually sanctioned by Alan Moore. Like it was stuff that he actually approved. And yeah, from his notes. 
yeah so it was uh it was pretty cool that's the only so like i don't know to me some of those books are just too special to the to touch again but then i have heard really good things about the show so i'm i'm not too close-minded to not give it a chance i just haven't had a chance to watch it why don't yeah, we have the a show watch party this summer mike yeah sorry mike why don't we have a watch party we should have a watch party that would be fun <laughs> it's it, i highly recommend it honestly party, who watches the watchman watching the watchman I, mean, I, like yeah. I like it well and then we'll stream it yeah, yeah. so people yeah. could watch We'll have two cameras, watch you, watch one of us, all <laughs> drinking, except for Mike, because he's still hungover. <laughs> not hungover. I'm just old. <laughs> old now. I'm older than you. <laughs> uh, uh, Sam, Sam is saying they're actually reprinting the Watchmen RPG material. Oh, cool. Really? Yeah. Very cool. Uh, uh. Sam has this bizarre, crazy amount of information. Yeah, Sam is... <laughs> <laughs> I know. He's comics encyclopedia. He always like I always catch his posts. He always posts new stuff on the, on the swamp thing uh, on the swamp thing. Uh, like... More more DNA on. Uh... <laughs> Are you watching some? We yeah. got some. We got some dog DNA. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's he's a puppy, right, uh, Richard? She's uh, yeah, she's a little oh, sweetheart. She... Rocket, yeah. oh, I can't wait to meet her one day, man. Yeah. You adopted this dog, right? Yeah, right at the start of the pandemic. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, there you go. Rocket. <laughs> hey, little Rocket. Oh, geez. <laughs> there he is, his baby. She wanted some attention. Next time we all bring our pets and we just, yeah. uh, we film that. <laughs> we'll probably get more ratings. We'll get. <laughs> yeah, you got puppy ratings now, man. There you go. We'll, we'll put out pans of paint and we'll let them run over a giant canvas. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. my One of my dogs would love that, actually. Yeah. She's, she's, her coat is all white and she loves to, like, roll in the mud and stuff. And other things. And other things. Oh. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to put you down. Yeah. All, right. All right. All right, guys. It's two minutes to nine. <laughs> well, I will probably need to put a little overtime into this because I didn't get as far ahead as I wanted. But okay. we're getting... Yeah. Well, you're sick, Mike. Getting... Sorry, the page is kind of sick. It's, uh, man. Yeah. Getting there. It's yeah, hard because it's so awesome. reflecty, but yeah, it's a big piece. What did you? Sorry. What did you paint with? So I'm just inking. Uh, Use using ink. The whole thing just been ink. Um, oh, oh yeah. Um, right yeah. now I'm just kind of laying in some washes and stuff. So like I'm, I uh, kind of do like a 50 percent, not a 50 percent gray, but like a probably a 25 percent kind of mixture of water that I just uh, kind of overlay now, and it'll sink into the paper a little bit. Um, the paper's not as thick as I'd like. I wish I could get like a nice thick, like 300 yeah, pounds. Looks pounds. like it's a drawing paper, not a watercolor paper. It is a drawing paper, yeah. yeah. This, these ripples will go away. I've got it taped down, but it's just um, it's, during the during the process, yeah, it's a little bit frustrating to use. So I wasn't going to do a wash. Is that a 12? Sorry? Is that a 12 brush? This is a 20 brush. <laughs> oh, jeez. I like to challenge myself. I like to uh, sometimes use the fattest brush I can to make the finest lines, just to see if I can. Um, so I use for pupils. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm not going to need them for pupils, right? So. Uh... <laughs> yeah, I think the largest brushes I use, I use a bamboo and uh, a size eight. Yeah, I usually start at like a size four. Like I usually start at size four, Raphael round, uh, Kalinsky Sable is my favorite brush. That's the one that I like to use the best. Um, I find it's the most versatile. Like I know for years, everyone was like, you gotta get a Windsor of Newton series seven number two. And that's a nice brush, but I find uh, I can get a finer line with a number four than I can with a number two. Just because yeah, of the, the, the bellies in the number two just aren't as good yeah. as they used to be. Yeah, it's just the way the ink, the way the ink loads into it. It just like, yeah. I can get a lot more duration out of a number four. But Sometimes I like using a big brush like this just because it, it takes some of the thinking out of it. And I just have to kind of accept whatever goes on the page. Um, 
So and it, it also it, helps you up. You don't have to dip your uh, your brushes off. No, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, uh, the one thing I, I, I need to tell my students whenever they start using a brush, I'm saying when it comes down to it, the point is the same size as a yeah. lower number exactly. brush. Exactly. It just yeah. it just becomes whether or not you're going to control it. Yep. I love that you guys are are comparing the size of your brushes. <laughs> yeah, well, Mike's is big. Mike has it I insist it's not the size of the brush; it's how you use it. <laughs> That's why I use pens. Just a tip. Well, sometimes I use my acorn, right? So. Uh... <laughs> oh. <whoa. laughs> I don't. <laughs> That's a double level joke. So wow, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's the fever. What, it's okay. Out of all the objects you've like drawn and painting with, which is the worst? Oh man, Anything? what do you regret having to use? Oh god, there's there's some for sure. Yeah. There's stuff that I think is going to be awesome. Like someone gave me a porcupine quill at a show. And I have freaked out. Oh. I'm like, a porcupine quill? This is going to be the coolest thing ever. Nope, it was a nightmare. It wouldn't, <laughs> open the ink. It wouldn't move any ink. It wouldn't push any ink around on the page. It, it could have been the greatest thing. And I should do a shout out, actually, because it was uh, Amy and Keith from uh, Freak Show Comics in Niagara Falls who gave it to me at the Frightmare in the Falls show, uh, which I was at their table for. Um, and they gave me a porcupine quill to draw with. And I was so excited, man. But... Uh, it, it was no fun. Probably the weirdest and coolest thing, not the cool, well, maybe the coolest thing that I drew with uh, through that series was actually another thing that Amy and Keith gave me to do a drawing of their cat with, which was a tiny miniature wooden penis. Uh, <laughs> it was about the size of a. Uh, uh, can, can I can I can I stop the show right now? Because it can't get any better than this. Like, <laughs> uh, and it was actually really great to draw with. It was a fridge magnet, like a resin. <laughs> Uh, so it was the size of a number Mike, I have to ask before he cuts it off. You yeah. didn't happen to prick your finger with that prick. <laughs> no, it was, too, it was too blunt for that. But uh, yeah. So uh, sorry. Was that was that a good thing to use or a bad thing to use? It actually was a good. Thing. Actually, that actually had like a really weird flat base that I could drag lots of flat areas of ink in, and the tip of it was actually pretty good for lines. So. Okay. Uh, so so we you take... just used the tip. I, I, did, I just the, tip. the tip was well, very well worn at the end. So, uh, that's what I'm going to, I'm going to call this video on YouTube. Just the tip. Just the tip. Um, <laughs> I think you're going to get everybody requesting that for the next one, Mike. Yeah. Found object throwdown sometime. That would be fun. Because found um, object throwdown. There is some stuff that you can draw with. You can find just walking around outside that will actually blow your mind. At what an incredible drawing tool it is. One of my favorite things to use is a dried up black eyed Susan. Um, you know, the kind that you just like, you know, I walk past like old, like the library or like a, a store that has like an unkempt, uh, you know, uh, garden out front. I just grabbed a couple of dead flowers. But the black eyed Susan has a particularly stiff uh, stem and the head of it actually has a great texture. So you can roll out some cool stippling features and stuff. And um, I love drawing with that. It's got great flex to it. You can, you can do some cool stuff. You should make a paintbrush out of your beard. What's that? You should make a paintbrush out of your beard. Oh my gosh. You should all make a paintbrush out of Mike's beard. I shed enough. Yeah. Amazing. Brush every week. But, uh, Dominic said, did I just hear that's when I drew with a tiny wooden penis? <laughs> Morley said, yep, that just happened. <laughs> Artists everywhere flood Amazon and searches for tiny wooden penis. <laughs> I'm telling you. Again? <laughs> uh, that's amazing. <laughs> so I guess right, we're done. It's it's yeah, it's five past nine, guys. All right. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Once again, very successful. Uh, so uh, what I'll do, I'm going to wrap it up. But I uh, appreciate you guys uh, doing this tonight. Again, uh, what we'll do is I will. Um, so I'm going to do a quick spotlight on the three pieces for now. And I know some of them aren't quite done yet, but they'll get done. No, not quite. Not quite. <laughs> Paul, Paul needs uh, another few hours. But it looks Maybe amazing, I'll, go, though. I'll, I'll probably go live on my own page and finish this later on. You're going to go live and finish it? Okay, great. Go oh. over to Paul's page yeah. and check it out. Oh. 
All right. Oh, cool. It'd be like um, Twitch when we're all going to, you know, gang bomb, bomb or whatever they call it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, so check out Paul's page for that, oh, yeah. and uh, we'll have the official uh, the official it's not auction. Quite on my end, guys, I'm not sure if it has for you. Oh, that's that, Mike? that's pretty that's pretty good for uh, being sick, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for you being sick. <laughs> All right, that's that's cool, Mike. Can you push it up a little bit? We'll uh, see the bottom. Did he step away? Oh, he went away. Okay. <laughs> Let's look quickly at Richards again. Uh, uh, so this was already spoken for, guys, but uh, Mike's will be up for auction. And let's look at Paul's. Very cool. Oh, this is going to be sick, Paul. Is that a Nazi Thanks. flag he's uh, ripping up? <laughs> yes, it is. Awesome. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I did. I didn't want to. You know, you know what we're all supposed to say. Fuck Nazis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, now I don't want to show mine. I should have shown mine first. <laughs> I love All right, guys. Yours, though. Here we go. Hey. Make it bigger. In big in it. All right. I'll in big yeah. it. God. <laughs> God help me. All right. There we go. All right. Yeah. Oh, my God. You got swastikas in his horns. Hell wolf. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> Hell elf. Nice. Nice. He headbutts Nazis. Boom. Just before he takes Boom. his scalp. Boom. <laughs> Check out my pointy my ears. Scalp. Don't look at my ears. Look at my cool uh, facial hair. All right. Yeah. yeah, the ears are fine, man. <laughs> All right. That was, that was a blast, guys. I really appreciate it. Okay. Uh, so stay tuned. Uh, and we will have uh, Schedule Mania 5. Thanks again, Paul. Uh, Richard, Thank thanks for your time. Uh, did Mike already leave? I think he went looking Seems for a like black-eyed Susan. <laughs> or he's looking for his wood, wooden dick. I was going to say, he's, he's, <laughs> he got inspired, maybe, by the, the last part of the show. Uh, thanks a lot again, and look out for the post. And uh, thanks for watching, folks. Cheers. Take care. You Bye. too. Bye. Bye.